In Morgantown, West Virginia, they start tailgating at the crack of dawn. In fact, they eat, drink, and sleep Mountaineer football. One of the best environments in college football to watch some of the best athletes in the game. Pat White, Big East Player of the Year in 2006. Steve Slayton finished fourth in Heisman voting a year ago. And a future star, Noel Devine. They make a winning combination. feel like they could be at world's end by the end of today as they take on a Mountaineer team that is 3-0 and has blown out every opponent so far in 2007. The fifth-ranked Mountaineers against an East Carolina team that, by the way, has played West Virginia as well as perhaps anybody in the country defensively the last couple of years. We're about 30 seconds away from kickoff with Aaron Andrews. Andre Ware, I'm Dave Passion. Andre, very tough place to make your third career start if you're East Carolina quarterback Patrick Pinckney. Yeah, he's played with tremendous poise. He's made some great decisions for a guy who's basically just been in the lineup as a starter a couple of weeks. Two weeks ago against North Carolina, he threw for over 400 yards, had his coming out party. He will lead this ECU offense this afternoon. Humid here in Morgantown on a beautiful Saturday. Temperature around 80 degrees will likely get into the mid 80s by the end of the contest and again very humid. But as we showed you the fans were out here at the crack of dawn for this one. Doesn't matter who they play here in Morgantown this place is full. Chris Johnson who likely today will set the career mark in kick return yards at East Carolina already owns the all purpose yard record. Awaits the kickoff from the 30-yard line, and we're underway on this Saturday in Morgantown. It'll be Jonathan Williams taking it out for East Carolina. And Williams past the 20, and a flag down as Williams is tackled at the 23 by Antonio Lewis. Well, East Carolina going to need tremendous field position in this football game against the number five ranked team in the country, West Virginia. A lot of things have to go right. All right, let's check in now with the third member of our crew, Aaron Andrews. Dave, West Virginia's head coach, Rich Rodriguez, told me his biggest concern heading into this game is Hold his it. defense's state of mind. He said, for some reason, nationally, everybody wants to hammer at them. So he said this week, he told him, stop reading the internet, don't pick up a paper. He said, play like you did last Thursday against Maryland. He told me the first time he felt they played in total control and with confidence. Well, the interesting thing, guys, is West Virginia has blown everybody out, yeah. yet they've already dropped in the polls from third to fifth. They were ranked third in the preseason. A lot of teams just feel like they're so undersized that they can just kind of push them around. And uh, I don't know if that's the case. After the holding penalty on first down, it's Chris Johnson. Nowhere to go. Spun down at the 10-yard line by Keelan Dykes. Let's meet the East Carolina Pirate offense. Here's Patrick Pinckney. I got my speedy running back, Chris Johnson, at the wideout. I got Bit Tom, Jamar Bryant. At the tight end, I got the youngin, Devon Drew. On my weak side protecting me, I got Big Country, Josh Kaufman, and Big Red at the left guard, Matt Butler. And Pickney's gonna need his guys up front to give him some protection and also block for Chris Johnson, which they did, uh, did not do on first down. Here's Johnson again. This time there's a hole. And Johnson up to the 19-yard line. Got nine yards on the play. Here's the West Virginia defensive starters and Eric Wicks. Clogging up the middle, we have Keelan Dykes at nose tackle. At the middle linebacker, we have hard-hitting Reed Williams. In the 3-3-5 defense, we have three safeties. Two big-hitting safeties, Quentin Andrews and Ryan Money. And they'll have to be stout in the middle, Keelan. Dykes, Scooter Berry, as well as Johnny Dingle on those edges, clogging up the middle and trying to stop this East Carolina offense against the run. So movement on the offensive line, the right tackle, DJ Scott, came up out of his stance. 
False start. Number 66 on the offense. Five yards, remains third down. West Virginia's pass defense struggled last year, 109th in the country, and they may have their hands full with Mr. Pinckney. You talked about it, Andre, in just his first start, 400 yards passing and a win against North Carolina. Yeah, he's, he makes good decisions uh, in the game. It, the game's never too big for him. He always looks like he's under control. You bring the blitz, he'll stare it right in the face, deliver the football. They like to use him a lot in play action and roll him around because he's athletic as well. 240 yards passing per game so far. One pick, five touchdowns, third down and 10. And Pinckney going deep for Jamar Bryant. And it's incomplete. No penalty flag. A lot of contact downfield before the ball was thrown and while it was in the air. But East Carolina will punt. Yeah, West Virginia is showing that too deep, too deep zone and he safety help over the top. They try to get to their best receiver, Jamar Bryant, right here. You just beat it outside. Got to take, uh, take a little air from under the football so the safety doesn't get in there. This kind of looks like a little bumping to me. Surprised the officials didn't throw a flag there. If that's not interference, then show me what is. <laughs> that was it's ridiculous. It's called home cooking is what it's called. Vaughn Rivers to receive the punt. punt. Rivers from the 35. Rivers breaks free at midfield. And down to the East Carolina 41-yard line. So West Virginia with excellent starting field position. And here is fullback Owen Schmidt. I don't know about the dynamic duel with Pat White and Steve Slayton, but let me introduce the Hog Mollies up front. You got Knockdown King Ryan Stanchek, Human Vacuum Jake Figner, Young Buck Rody Rodemeyer, Big Shrek Greg Danner, and at center we got the truth Mike Dent. Well, Owen Schmidt, the true definition of a throwback football player. He loves contact. 260 pounder. Former walk-on attended a Division III school in Wisconsin before making it at West Virginia and probably going to be in the NFL next year. A lot of scouts like him. Here's a pass to Brandon Hogan, a true freshman, who's getting the start today for injured Darius Raynaud. Hurt his shoulder in uh, practice a couple of weeks ago. Now for the East Carolina defensive starters, here's Quentin Cotton. Up front we have Jay Rawls. And Lenville, Manish Howard Joseph, and the linebacker core, we have P. Bell the Great and Dance and Fred Wilson. And secondary, we have Travis Williams, Eight the Great at the corner, and Van Playmaking Estridge at the safety. And East Carolina's done a pretty good job against the run this year, 25th in the country, and they have not allowed a 25 yard run in eight straight games. West Virginia's already got 13 runs of 20 yards or more. Here's Slate, and trips up at the 20 yard line. Got 10 on the play, but. Travis Williams with a touchdown saving Boy, trip up. Slayton's one of those guys that every time he touches the football, fans come out of their seat. Everybody thinks he's got a chance to break it. You look here, watch him read the zone, tries to bounce it outside and right there, getting his shoulders pointed north and south. That's the sign of a good running back. When you can get your momentum going, we know about the speed, but once he hits it, boy, he turns it in from 60 to 100 miles an hour really quick. And healthy this year. Had that right wrist injury yeah. a year ago. Hurt him against Louisville when he fumbled twice. But says he's healthy here in 2007. Another guy is healthy. Always dangerous. Pat White on the carry. And he was thrown down at the 15. Got five on the play. Marcus Hands made the tackle. Well, he is a fearless player. Not afraid to stick his nose in there as a quarterback of this football team. Was a fourth round draft pick of the Anaheim Angels as an outfielder. And I got a chance to sit down with him yesterday, had lunch with him, and you talk about just an inspiration uh, in terms of just a level head kid with uh, with everything on the upside. Pat White's a good, good individual. 18 rushing touchdowns last season. Hands off the slate here, and he has stood up, lost a yard in the play. Jay Ross. Sophomore defensive tackle sticking his nose into the chest of Slayton. Well, you talk to Greg Hudson, the defensive coordinator for East Carolina. He says he's playing some good football. He is a big, big load in the middle. He'll have to clog that up. You see, they like to show it inside to uh, Slayton, bring Pat White, and then give it to Slayton sometime. Those guys up front are going to have to play some sound football. And you saw defensive coordinator Greg Hudson there. Good football coach. They've done a good job against West Virginia the last two years. Here they're trying to stop Slayton on third down, and they up and at the 15-yard line as Travis Williams makes the play. 
East Carolina is a very sound tackling team, and they force West Virginia into a field goal attempt. Now, when you, we talked to Rich Rodriguez yesterday, I said, what is it about East Carolina's defense that concerns you? He says, well, they tackle so well in space. You talk to Greg Hudson, what do you have to do to stop West Virginia? We got to tackle well in space. Right there, kind of corralling Steve Slayton before he gets going, that entire East Carolina defense. They've got some new starters in the, the secondary that really shut down West Virginia's run game as McAfee's 31 yarder is good. And I think here's Carolina will take that considering West Virginia started at the 40 yard line. And you can see Skip Bolts congratulating his defense, holding the Mountaineers to three on their opening possession here in Morgantown. This telecast is available on ESPN2 HD, presented by Pioneer Kuro HD TV. Here in Morgantown on a beautiful Saturday afternoon, West Virginia leading East Carolina by a score of three to nothing. With Andre Ware, Aaron Andrews, I'm Dave Patch. Time once again for hardware, the tangible, software, the intangible. Let's start with the software. Well, software is Pat White and Steve Slayton and trying to find the soft spots in that East Carolina defense. They've struggled against this defense the last two seasons, only 127 yards rushing last year and 153 the year before. So it'll be some tough going offensively. Chris Johnson will take it out of the end zone for East Carolina. And Johnson down at the 22-yard line. How about hardware, Dre? Hardware, Quentin Cotton, the, the outside linebacker for East Carolina, and uh, leads the number one ranked rush defense in Conference USA. They'll have to be that and more against this good West Virginia football team. East Carolina played well against Virginia Tech in a very emotional environment. Yeah. They've beat North Carolina. Last year, they played very well defensively, beat NC State, beat Virginia, I and mean, they beat three ACC teams. Now, the ACC, not what the Big East is these days, but still pretty good league. Well, you talk to Skip Holtz, they're not afraid to go anywhere and play anybody. They will line it up face mask to face mask and bring it against anyone in the country. And Pickney's got a wide open man downfield. It's the tight end, Devon Drew, but he can't make the catch. Let's go to the studio, check in with Stan Verrett. All right, Dave, let's check on another Big East contender, South Florida, ranked for the first time ever, taking on North Carolina. And it's Mike Ford getting around the end for the touchdown, his fourth of the year. And the Bulls with a 7 0 lead on the heels at home. Boy, Jim Levitt already off to a good start and has built that program from the ground up. What is good to see when, uh, when they have that type of success at a program like South Florida. Don't forget on Friday night it'll be West Virginia and South Florida down in Tampa. South Florida won here in Morgantown last year. Dominique Lindsay out of the backfield wrestled out of bounds by Ryan Mundy near the first down marker. Well, it was November 26th of last year when South Florida came to Morgantown. White and Slayton held in check. Matt Grothy and the South Florida Winning that game, White and Slayton limited to 60 yards on 33 carries, and that was the biggest win in the program's history at South Florida. Well, we're going to have some, some that are larger than that one. We talk about another team that's not afraid to go places and play people. Jim Levitt, the South Florida Bulls, they will line it up and go anywhere. One at Auburn, Get the charter ready, baby. They give it to Lindsay, who's got the first down as he powers into the secondary up to the 39 yard line. Well, they kind of have him in the backfield along with Chris Johnson. Kind of two running back types. They'll line him up at fullback from time to time, get the tough yards inside, like on that play. But they're going to have to get some, some, ins some good play up front. Josh Kaufman, probably their best player along that front of offensive lineman Doug Palmer. Some experience there on the offensive line. Chris Johnson from Orlando, preseason first team All Conference USA, and a broken play. Let's see if Pinkney can make something out of it. He does complete it, and Drew catches it this time, and he does get positive yardage out to the 44. Quentin Andrews on the tackle. Pinkney is a guy who can keep plays alive because he's so athletic. This is a breakdown. It's supposed to be play action. I don't know if he goes the wrong way or Chris Johnson goes the wrong way, but he opens wrong. There, keep the play alive. You know where you're supposed to go. Know where your outlet receivers are, and you can still keep the play going. Nice delivery of the football to Devon Drew is tied in. We talked about Pinkney beating North Carolina in his first ever start. His dad Reggie 
was on the only other East Carolina team to beat North Carolina back in 1975. That was a sixth round pick of the Detroit Lions back in 77. Johnson with a catch in the first down out of the backfield. East Carolina moving the ball so far against the Mountaineers on this drive. Well, this is what they need to do. Chew up a little clock, move the football, keep that high-powered West Virginia offense on the sideline. Maybe they tighten up just a little bit. They don't have all the gears uh, working in sync today. But uh, this is what you got to do. Move the football, mixing the run with the pass. Keep this West Virginia defense on its heels. Don't be surprised if Skip Holtz's name is brought up for a bigger position a jobs, after right. this year. They won seven games last year, most for East Carolina since 2000. First bowl since 2001. And as mentioned, two wins over ACC team. Yeah, I saw him in the Papa John's dot com bowl last season. Here's Pinckney on first down. And throws in between two West Virginia defenders to T.J. Lee for a first down to the 36-yard line. 12-yard pickup for East Carolina. Well, he's going to get some tremendous pressure outside. And we talk about staring the blitz in the face and delivering the football. Right here, that's where the pressure is going to come from on Patrick Pigney. Steps up in the pocket just like you're taught. Deliver the football. Use the eyes. Pulling defenders away from your receiver. And deliver it on time for big time, big time first down strike. Boy, he doesn't he flinch. He is as poised as there is at the position. He's a junior but did not play any until this year had two shoulder surgeries in his first three years in Greenville play fake and Pickney going to the sideline where it is picked off by Morty Ivy. We just threw it behind him. This is one where it didn't need to have a lot of air under it but it needed to be over the top. He threw it like a fade stop behind the receiver leaking out of the backfield and Morty Ivy made one heck of a play on it right here for the interception. You'll see it. You got to use your eyes when you're playing zone. Nice little play fake inside this one needs a little bit more air over the head of Morty Ivy threw it to a little bit too low and allowed for the interception. So a great drive for East Carolina in which they picked up three first downs ends on the turnover and come before that East Carolina was plus six in turnover margin. Kind of behind the eight ball already in turnover margin that's going to win you a lot of football games when you can get on the plus side of that turnover margin. Here's Slayton on first down not a lot of running room. Fred Wilson on the tackle. Slayton held to 80 yards against East Carolina last year and was the number four running back two years ago when they played the Pirates. Well, you heard me mention Quentin Cotton and Pierre Bell having to have big games for East Carolina that Skip Holtz defense but Fred Wilson inside because West Virginia they'll challenge you with Slayton and Owen Schmidt right in the middle and between those tackles. It was Ivy's interception that gives West Virginia the ball back in a second and seven at their 34. And here is Raynaud as a shoulder injury. Didn't start, but comes on this play and breaks tackles in midfield. Raynaud still going inside the 20, 10, 5, and Raynaud is out of bounds inside the five yard line. Well, they call this a misdirection type offense, and you see Pat White start one way. Darius Reynard's going to come right around this way for a nice little flip, and you see him right here. I talked to Pat White yesterday about Darius Reynard, and he said every Saturday he's the best athlete on the field. 42 inch vertical jump, can squat over 600 pounds, runs with toughness, and you see it right there, bouncing off two defenders. Boy, what a nice play. 64 yard run, first down at the East Carolina 2. Slate to the goal line and down there did not get in he took a shot from Zach Slate and also sticking his nose in there was Leon Best. Uh, Zach Slate preseason all conference per, uh, pick even though he red shirted last year he's fast quick off the edge he's a nice edge player and a squeezing everything back down inside where he's got some help from Jay Ross Mark Robinson those big guys in the middle of that front seven for East Carolina. Slate tackles Slayton and now a second and goal to one. It'll be Slayton again and this time he's in touchdown Slayton as he ties the West Virginia record for most rushing TDs in a career. If he breaks it. 
some point during this game, Skip Holtz and East Carolina are going to be in a little trouble because, you know, down by nine points, soon to be ten, if they are able, if Pat McGee was Maccabee is able to knock this baby through, East Carolina got a tough chore getting back in on the road. Ninth rushing touchdown, 10th TD overall for Slayton. McAfee tacks tech, on the extra point. 64-yard run by Darius Raynaud sets up the touchdown for Slayton. And West Virginia, thanks to an interception by Ivy, big run by Raynaud leads East Carolina 10 to nothing midway through the first. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Dodge. Live life to the fullest. Dodge, grab life. And Kingsford Charcoal. Grab your friends and family and fire up the grill. It's time to bring the tailgate home. The tailgate never ends here in Morgantown. 10 to nothing as Darius Raynaud's 64-yard run sets up Slayton's touchdown that ties the West Virginia record for most rushing TDs in a career. Joining Avon Coburn, West Virginia's all-time leading rusher, and Rat Rogers, who was a fullback back in 1917 to 1919. It was Ivy's interception that stalled East Carolina's drive. And now on the return, Chris Johnson has trouble with it. Johnson passed the 25. Still moving as he gets grabbed at the ankles at the 42-yard line by John Holmes. Back to the studio and stand. All right, David, this Taco Bell studio update takes us to Louisville, taking on Syracuse, and the Cardinals' defense continues to be a concern. Syracuse, 116th in scoring offense in the nation, but Andrew Robinson hooks up with Ty Smith's 79-yard touchdown in the orange up on the Cardinals. Stan, I think I, I could have made that throw. He's so wide open. <laughs> Get the old arm here, you know, kind of lubed up. I, I can go out and make that one. I'll tell you, well, I saw you throw when we were at the Edward Jones Dome for that Missouri Illinois game a few weeks ago. My hands still hurt from catching your passes, and my legs still hurt from you making me run those uh, skinny posts. <laughs> Here's a running play on first down. Good second effort, but just stonewalled. And on that play is Dominic Lindsay. Well, Joe Paterno and his Navy Lions have lost eight straight to Michigan. Later today, they go to the big house, try to end that streak against Michigan. College football presented by Best Buy, part of a tailgate week presented by Kingsford on ABC, 3.30 Eastern time. And there's a member of last year's Michigan team on this West Virginia squad. Yeah. Ryan Mundy. He's a postgraduate transfer. Got in just under when they changed the rule, and you can graduate and then still transfer if you have eligibility. Penn State will go to Michigan today. They'll end that streak. You think so? Yep, stamp that. It's good. Mallet expected to start that game at quarterback. Pinckney in trouble and gets rid of it as he was in the grasp incomplete. And it'll bring up third down and seven. Good job to get rid of that ball as Johnny Dingle was bringing him down. A good heads up play on the part of Patrick Pinckney. Keeping the play alive. Guys draped all over him and still able to just get it out. He was outside the tackle box. Just throw the football away and live to fight on second down. Watch him here. He's going to get nice pressure from the outside. Horny Ivy right there. A bunch of West Virginia players there. But that's a, little, that's a lot of strength, too. Strength in the legs to be able to stay up against a big defensive lineman trying to drag you down. Needs to make a play here on third down and eight. Got to do something to silence the crowd and keep West Virginia's potent offense on the sideline. He's got pressure coming from the outside. But a penalty flag first. It's going to be a false start against East Carolina. False start. 69 on the offense. Five yards. Repeat those down. Yeah, penalties a problem for East Carolina, and they've kind of reared their heads again in this game. Last season, 4.5 penalties a game. This season, it's up to 10, and that's something that Coach Skip Holtz has got to get a handle on. Already 33 penalties, Andre. It's tough. When you start in drives behind the down and distance markers, that is that is tough. Well, he pulls a guy out of the game. Going to discuss it with him right now. Now third down and 17. Pinkney. And the ball's loose. And it's still 
down on the ground and then finally recovered by Fred Hicks, the center inside the 20 yard line. There's a clock in your head as a quarterback that when you drop back, you only know you know how many ticks it takes before you've got to get the football out and away. Right now, Patrick Pinckney holding on to the football a little bit long. You see right here, once you pump fake it one time, it's got to come out, and all of a sudden, guys are raking at the football. Good job by Mark Magro, the big defensive lineman there, or excuse me, linebacker, of getting his hand on the football, but you've got to let that ball go. You may get one pump against a high-pressure unit like West Virginia, and that is it. It's got to come out. How is that not offside? That's what I want to know. <laughs> uh, I thought Scooter maybe. Berry looked like yeah. he was a yard offside at the snap, but no penalty. Officials, a little conference going on. Barry scooped up the ball and eventually recovered by Hicks at the 19-yard line. They were trying to figure out exactly where to spot the ball, but it looked like uh, they had it right at first. Yeah. And, and you got to, if you're Patrick Pena, you got to go to your receivers as well and tell them, hey, look, I'm getting some heat back here. I need you to get in, your, in and out of your routes a little bit faster so I can deliver the football. Matt Dodge, 51-yard punt, first time. Another, another pretty good punt. Nice. Rivers inside the 30. Penalty flag comes soaring in. And Rivers got creamed that time by Chris Maddox on the sideline. Another penalty flag flies in. Let's see here. This is usually when they, when they fly out that fast, it's not a good thing for the return team. And Delvin Mack was over there too, hitting Rivers as he was out of bounds. Right now, my man Skip Holtz doesn't know what hit him. He just knows it's happening fast. I mean, this is the worst possible start it's for like, East Carolina. Oh, it is. It's like being in the ring with a boxer, and all of a sudden he's the faster guy, and you keep eating that jab. You, you don't know where it's coming from, but it's just keeps tapping you on the lips. He said West Virginia is so good they can make people look stupid. I don't know if that's the proper terminology for what's happening at this point, but. We have three flags on the play. Three. Blocking the back. Number one on the receiving team. That penalty is declined. Holding. Number nine on the receiving team. That penalty is declined. Blocking the back. Number 17. <laughs> on the receiving team 10 yards from spot of foul first down and rich rodriguez wants the late hit out of bounds but not going to get it there all three penalties on the mountaineers well it just means more yards to gain for patrick white and steve slayton on the ground 10 nothing they lead east carolina Back in beautiful Morgantown, West Virginia. 10 0. Mountaineers on top of East Carolina. Is it Steve Slayton or Pat White that uh, the fans here in Morgantown want to see win the Heisman? <laughs> You'll divide your, your fan base yeah, with those two guys. Split and then you throw in Noel in there. They already got him pumped up for the Heisman. Yeah, we haven't seen Noel Devine touch the ball yet today. White going deep, incomplete. At the 40 yard line, Travis Williams on the coverage downfield. Pat White has not thrown an interception this year. Two touchdown passes in five of his last six games. And obviously, last year, he and Slayton with about 3,000 rushing yards. Yeah, certainly West Virginia off to a different start than last year's ball game against East Carolina. But Pat White, same thing last season, came into this game, no interceptions. He actually threw th two in the first half of that game. West Virginia was ranked fourth in the country last year, come into this one ranked fifth. So a lot of similarities there between these two teams in this very game. Here's the pitch to Slayton trying to get the corner. Slayton all the way to the 35-yard line for about 18 yards where Van Eskridge and Jarek Hewitt make the tackle. Back to the studio we go and stand for rest. All right, Dave Clemson and NC State hooking up in Raleigh. Cullen Harper hit C.J. Spiller for a touchdown pass, and then on the ensuing kickoff, they kick it to Darrell Blackman, and Blackman does the rest. NC State ties it at seven, and that's where they stand right now. And Tom O'Brien at the Wolfpack playing well. 
Here's Noel Devine on the carry at five rushes for 136 yards against Maryland. True freshman from Fort Myers, Florida. I came into this game averaging over 15 yards a carry with three touchdowns. He is lightning in a bottle. If you think Steve Slayton's fast, this youngster here, he is gifted. And we'll talk more about uh, his story and how he got to Morgantown as we go along here today. Went to the same high school as Deion Sanders. Second down and five as Slayton returns. And Devine goes to the sideline. And here is Steve Slayton. Got about two before Eskridge makes his fourth tackle of the game. Got in an argument with a couple of buddies and debated this as well that I think Deion Sanders we were talking about Noel Devine going to the same high school yep. maybe the best player to ever play in the NFL when you talk about athletically change the game on offense change the game on defense change the game on special teams he was amazing you know some people think Bo Jackson might have been uh, had his career gone longer he ran a 4 2 40 and obviously had great size as Tito Gonzalez pulls it in across the middle to the 48 yard line. Which finds a junior wide receiver from Tampa, Florida. Blake High School, and you see Devine there. He is, uh, he is something else. Well, Deion Sanders obviously had a great NFL career, and he would, he would get my vote for greatest all time. Played a major role, and uh, that's a lot of football I've watched. Yes, you have. A lot of different eras, but do you talk about a guy that could change the game on every level? It'd be hard to argue against Deion Sanders. And he's been a mentor to Devine as Slayton takes the pitch in the stiff arm at midfield. And all the way to the 36 yard line. 12 more yards for Steve Slayton before Pierre Bell makes the hit. Boy, he just shook the socks off Chris Maddox, the sophomore free safety. Watch here the stiff arm. He wants to throw this football. And right here, nice little stiff arm showing you the shake and bake as well as the strength to go with it. Boy, Steve Slayton off to a good start in this game. Well, this kind of crowd gets into that. <laughs> I know NFL scouts are not publicly allowed to talk about juniors, but I had one tell me last week that they think Steve Slayton is special. The real deal, huh? Slayton gets just one this time to the 35. Dalvin Mack on the tackle. Well, you, you talk about the success. You see Steve Slayton here, the Slaterator nickname. Big crab leg fan. And, you know, he kind of runs like Emmett Smith. Emmett wished he had that much speed. I know Emmett. And Emmett couldn't giddy up like Steve Slate. Oh! <laughs> See if Emmett takes you to task on Monday night <laughs> after saying that. Well, Emmett had incredible vision. That's what made him so good. He also had a great offensive line in Dallas as Devine. Well, Devine. Tried to get around the corner and could not. And this is going to bring up a third down and long as Danny Moisey makes the Tackle stop for East Carolina. That's a good job of tackling Danny in Moise. space. And we talked about that hit on it a little awesome. bit earlier. They've got to be able to tackle in space. And the reason why Greg Hudson has had so much success with uh, kind of corralling this West Virginia defense offense I'm sorry is the tackling ability of his free safeties uh, in the last couple of seasons but he's without experienced in the experience in the secondary and some young guys and you saw at the play before with Chris Maddox only the second time that Pat White has really been forced to throw the ball has a ton of time and has a first down as it's caught by Darrell Jala inside the 25 yard line Melvin Patterson downfield made the tackle right, Darrell nicknamed Jello can shake you a little bit six foot 195 pounds does a good job of recognizing zone coverage you see just the zone drops here settling in there nice delivery of the football with Pat White using his eyes talked about him I said what did you work uh, yesterday talked with him what did you work on in the offseason he says footwork and just delivering the football on time well, that was a strike and not a lot of people talk about how accurate of he a thrower is. he is there's big Owen Schmidt rubbling into the secondary and picking up nine down to the 15 yard line you got a 
feed the big fella every once in a while. The hole's going to come open just over the left side, right in here for Owen Schmidt. Just reads it. You see the space, the nice soft spot right there, the uncovered guard. Nice blocking angles for the guards inside to come down. Ryan stand back, the big big tackle coming down, pinching down, and now it's a big hole for Owen Schmidt to carry the ball through. 11th play of the drive coming if they get it off here, and they do. White finding Slayton out in the flat. And he gets the first down to the 11 yard line. on the tackle. That's the final play of the first quarter. Both Slayton and Pat White making plays as usual in the opening quarter. But Morty Ivy with a big play of the first quarter. That interception that led to a 64 yard run by Raynaud, set up the one yard touchdown by Slayton. It's 10 0 Mountaineers after one. Back in Morgantown, West Virginia on top of East Carolina, 10 to nothing. As we start the second quarter, a beautiful Saturday, a little humid, but that will not keep the fans away here in Morgantown. Been tailgating since, oh, last week. And again, Mountaineer Field at Pushkar Stadium, packed. West Virginia on the doorstep again. First down and 10 at the 12-yard line. And here's Raynaud on the end around. Make that divine on the carry. Cool me. Here, Bell made the tackle. After a minimal game, let's go back to the studio and stand. All right, Dave, a couple of other games we're keeping our eyes on on the ESPN family of networks over on ESPN USF with a 14 3 lead on North Carolina and UVA leading Georgia Tech 21 7. They just got an interception return for a touchdown from Jeffrey Fitzgerald. Virginia, Virginia on top Virginia, of Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech, I'm, I'm telling you. Second down and 11, a loss of one there for Divine. Slayton back into the game. Here's White on the keeper. White to the five, touchdown, Pat White. But once again, an inexperienced safety, Van Estridge, has a chance to make a play in the open field and swings and misses. He played linebacker last year because of injuries at that position, but he's one on one in the open field, has a chance to bring down Pat White. A swing and a miss. Fifth rushing score for Pat White this year. So both he and Slayton with a touchdown. We we're talking about perhaps the Heisman votes being split. West Virginia fans as McAfee taps on the extra point. Now Slayton getting him more votes after his touchdown and chalk up some votes for Pat White as he gets into the end zone. 17 nothing West Virginia. This is how we tailgate Morgantown, West Virginia. Cooking up some pig here in Morgantown. Doesn't that look good, Andre? A little barbecue sauce, a little Tabasco on there for you. Yeah, you know, send a little bit of that up here. I'll let you taste it. You want me to go first, huh? Be the guinea pig, huh? I'll bet it's the best pig you've ever had. I'm going to pass. 13-play scoring drive, Pat White with a touchdown. And now a short kickoff by McAfee. Johnson trying to get to the outside, and then cuts it back to the 40 and up around the 45-yard line. Oh, we saw you that shot of some of the West Virginia Mountaineer fans cooking some pig. Aaron Andrews earlier today in the midst of the Mountaineer tailgaters. All right, well, despite the noon start here in Morgantown today, these West Virginia fans started early. They showed up at 7 o'clock. They had the, their cereal, their breakfast, their eggs, but now it's time to move on to the hardcore stuff. Yeah, the Arkansas game is later tonight, but we started early here with the pig head, the pig hide, and if you want to be, you don't want to be that daring, you can just have your plain old chicken. But the Princeton Review, you can see clearly here today why they rated West Virginia the number one party school in America. No doubt about it. What was the pig head sitting in? <laughs> sitting in some kind of sauce. All I know is it was looking at you. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm on a pass. Let our producer Eric Poseman have my uh, my portion. You see the sauce right there sitting in some sauce. That gravy? Yeah. Right there. See that right there? That gravy, whatever that's called. I, I don't know. I, I'm. Eh. All I know is any food you no, eat when you're tailgating. Thank you. It always tastes good. Some of the best chefs 
are in parking lots of football stadiums. Nice play as Dominic Lindsay is tackled in the backfield by Ridwan Malik. Back up strong safety. Uh, Ridwan Malik right here coming from the outside. You see him here. Gets to the backfield. Quick. Nobody there to account for him. And you see him right here. Nice open area tackle before Chris Johnson is even able to get started. They've got to do a better job of identifying up front along the offensive line. Because otherwise you're going to have guys in the secondary creeping up the remainder of this game. Only two yards for East Carolina. Pinckney on the quarterback draw, muscling to the 34-yard line for seven yards. Morty Ivey made the tackle as we bring Aaron Andrews in. Dave Andre mentioned that offensive line. Keep in mind, a very young group. Three new starters on that line. And when I spoke with Skip Holtz, he said, if you look at their schedule, starting off with Virginia Tech, coming here to West Virginia, he said, not a way I want to break them in. When they were over on the sideline, a lot of instructions on how to handle this Mountaineers defense. Hey, Aaron, thanks for the bacon, by the way, that you sent up. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, thank you. That'll wake you up. Third down and five for an East Carolina offense that has struggled since that interception. And a penalty flag down. There's movement up I'll front. Start. Just killing themselves with penalties and ball start. Number 70 on the offense. Five yards. Remains third down. You see me, you hear me say from week to week, there are certain penalties, effort penalties that coaches, Skip Holtz, Rich Rodriguez, they can live with effort penalties, the holding penalties, sometimes maybe a block in the back that is questionable when a guy's in the play, but the ones that happen that occur before the start of the snap will drive coaches crazy. And now it's a third and ten. Pinkney throws in the dirt, would have been short of the first down marker anyway, intended for Jamar Bryant. Mark Magro, a Morgantown native, hit the quarterback as he released it. Yeah, Mark Magro, strong, tough defender, missed the spring recovering from knee surgery, and he's certainly come back to make up for it. Nice pressure on Patrick Pinkney there. When you take it from third and five in a manageable situation to third down and ten, and all of a sudden you're going to start to see all all types of exotic blitz packages. Dodge another good punt. Fielded at the 25 yard line by Rivers. And another good return by Rivers up to the 42 yard line. West Virginia will have very good field position to start their next drive after an 18 yard return by Rivers. Rough day so far for East Carolina. College football brought to you by Nissan, who invites you to shift the way you move through the world. And ESPN Game Plan. See the most college football every Saturday. To order, call your pay-per-view provider. A rib per point in that bucket right there for West Virginia. You sent a few of those up here. Well, I don't know if that's enough for you and Keelan Dykes. You guys uh, were going at it yesterday, <laughs> yeah, Keelan. Yeah, rib eating contest. Here's Reynado at a 64 yard end around in the first quarter and loses yardage here tackled at the 35 by Quinton Cotton. Let's go back to the studio and check in with Stan Barrett. All right, guys, we showed you the Louisville defense having some problems. Well, the special teams are having some problems as well. Brian Brahman just hit Scott Kuhn with a touchdown to tie the game, and then they kick off to Max Suter and just some poor tackling from Louisville, and then Suter turns on the speed, 93 yards for the touchdown, and the Orange back on top, 14-7. The Orange trying to make the alums proud today. That is... Uh, How about that? It's early, but certainly a surprise. <laughs> Good surprise, Louisville. though, right? It's a good surprise if you are a Syracuse fan. Pat White's pass caught. Raynaud batted around at the 47-yard line. Cotton. And Eskridge on the tackle. Another accurate throw by Mr. White. 
Uh, Raynaud right there took a nice shot over the middle, but I like the patience on the pat part of Pat White. He's going to get a nice in route right here, and Pat White's going to wait it out to find him in the second window right there and just sticks it right on his receiver. Well-timed and an accurate throw by Pat White. Now, most everybody knows the story. Committed to LSU, but thought that he would end up on defense or a wide receiver. So he chose West Virginia. Rich Rodriguez really the only coach that would commit to him, let him be the quarterback, and that White has proven Rodriguez right. Here's Jock Sanders, another youngster, true freshman, gets the first down to the 46-yard line in East Carolina territory. We mentioned Ray Knott has an injured right shoulder. I see Pat White standing in there. Look at that shot that he takes from uh, the strong safety Van Estridge. We mentioned earlier that he played linebacker last year. So he's sitting back there waiting to tee off on somebody, and Mr. Ray Nod was the recipient. And they're looking at uh, the right arm. Again, that shoulder hurt in practice earlier in the season. Slayton looking for a hole, and it closes at the 43. Three yards on the pickup for Slayton. Well, last week, Nick Saban led Alabama to a dramatic last-second victory. And this week, he looks to make it two in a row as they take on Georgia. College football primetime is part of Tailgate Week, presented by Kingsford on ESPN at 7.45 p.m. Eastern. Who do you like in that game, Direct? I like, uh, you know, Alabama's at home. It's hard to beat the home team when it's a close, close matchup. Always favor the home team. Alabama came after the man you just saw, Rich Rodriguez, before hiring Nick Saban as Pat White gets wrapped up at the 41-yard line, bringing up third down. And we mentioned that Alabama plays Georgia on ESPN over on ESPN 2 at 6 Eastern. Kentucky takes on Arkansas. LSU and South Carolina also today. How about Andre Woodson last week in that come from behind win against Louisville? Well, they just stood right in there and delivered the football against the ninth ranked team in the country. Now they find themselves in the top 25 this week. Third down and six. White. And this time through the hands of his intended receiver, Tito Gonzalez. Incomplete. Back to the studio, and here's Stan. All right, Dave, Clemson and NC State. Clemson already with a 10-7 lead. They've got a pair of good backs. This one is C.J. Spiller. Watch the cutback move. And he's into the end zone. Clemson with a 17-7 lead right now. Spiller already with 54 yards on the ground. My Spiller's something special. They have got a, a nice one-two punch of their own. Wayne Harris back to receive the punt by Pat McAfee. Well, they've got maybe the second best backfield in the country behind West Virginia, you think, in terms of runners? Maybe. As that sails into the end zone, East Carolina point. will have it at the 20. The end zone the I mean, you got Devine, Slayton, Pat White in the backfield. Could be the best. Got a bunch of them. When we come back, we'll talk West Virginia basketball. A Morgantown native, former Mountaineer point guard, returns as head coach and joins Aaron Andrews when we come back. Welcome back to West Virginia. The Mountaineers leading ECU by 17, and the crowd behind me was just chanting, Huggy, Huggy. West Virginia's new basketball coach, Bob Huggins, joining me right now. Welcome home, by the way. Of course, you played here, born here in West Virginia. What is it like to be back? It's terrific. I, you know, I went to school here. I was born here, and then I moved to Ohio, and I, I went to school here. People are absolutely wonderful. And answer your question, you asked me before, when, were they cheering for you or me? I think they were cheering for me. I know they were cheering for you. Thanks a lot for that. You said in your press conference when you were here, I just wanted to come home. Why? What separates this place? Because it's home. This is, I mean, the majority of the dear friends I have in the world, and I've been very blessed to have a bunch, are here in this area. My family, my brothers and sisters are within two hours. It's just, it's home. And then, you know, I had a chance five years ago or six years ago, and it didn't work out. And I just wanted to make sure it worked out this time. And it's the hardest thing I've ever done. Kansas State people, absolutely wonderful people, and it's the hardest decision professionally I've ever had to make. What was that decision process like for you? Well, it just came down, I wanted to come home. I mean, it didn't come down to anything else other than 
I wanted to come home and I wanted to finish my career around the people I love. We know you've had some great athletes pay, play for you in the past and of course we'll see them here this season. What do you think about the athletes Coach Rodriguez has out there on his field? I'd like to have a few of those guys. I think we could press pretty well with a few of those guys. <laughs> I, I, they're, they're unbelievable. They just outrun pursuit. Hey, good luck this season. It's fun to see you back here. Thank you. Guys. And, and happy birthday to Bob Huggins who turned no, 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 yesterday. He actually turned 54. I, I had to say it. I don't think Coach Huggins appreciates it, but Bob Huggins was a point guard here at West Virginia, 75 to 77. Was a grad assistant in 77. Taking over for John Beeline as the head coach. Beeline going to Michigan. Well, Huggins was actually watching a pickup game and saw a guy dunking and said, "Who's that guy? Let's go recruit him." It was Jared Brown, West Virginia's backup quarterback. <laughs> I'll tell you what, got a chance to talk to him a little bit last night at dinner, and he seems extremely excited to be back home. No place like home. Here's Vaughn Rivers on the kick return. Another good punt by Dodge. And Rivers up to the 28. Just before ESPN starts getting all these phone calls, we were talking about best backfields. Of course, McFadden and Felix Jones, but I'm, I'm talking about three guys. Does anybody have three guys in the backfield? Like West Virginia maybe, with Slayton, White, and Noel Devine. Maybe all the tailbacks that they have out at out at USC, but uh, certainly not the you know the way they contribute here at West Virginia. Pat White, Steve Slayton, and now the youngster Noel Devine. Let's not forget Owen Schmidt. If you want to put a fourth guy in there in yeah. terms of backfield talent, I mean Schmidt is likely going to be a first day NFL draft. Yeah, he's the big bull in the backfield. You can line him up at fullback. You can play him at tight end at 6'3", 260 pounds, and he can run. He's running four or five, so boy, he's got a bunch of talent. Here's Slayton to the outside. Cut it back and up to the 32-yard line. You know, if, what, wonder if West Virginia, even though Rich Rodriguez told Aaron Andrews before the game, hey, we're telling all our kids not to read the papers, you wonder if they're starting to get a little upset that they're not getting respect dropping in the polls from three to five. Everybody talking about right. LSU, Oklahoma, USC, uh, but nobody talking about West Virginia. Well, certainly on the defensive side of the football, a lot of criticism on, on that side for some guys that got moved around a little bit, pushed around in some games this season. But then the offense, getting uh, they're getting their just due because they, uh, they are certainly electric uh, this season once they have the football in their hands. Pat White, Steve Slayton. And here's White on the fake. And White getting close to the first down. Uh, the 38 yard uh, line tackled run. by Eskridge. The thing about Pat Man White, Eskridge. too, we, we touched on earlier, is his ability to throw the football. I mean, he's got right now yeah. the career completion percentage mark at West Virginia, 63%. I mean, he, he's accurate. Here. A lot of guys First talk down, about his Virginia. ability to run the football, and but he will he will stand in there, and he doesn't have an interception oh, on the season. You mentioned it's 63 percent, a high percentage for a team or a quarterback that runs the football as much as Pat White. Rich Rodriguez fell in love with his leadership skills in high school. There's Hogan getting a huge block from Wes Lyons and getting close to the first down marker at the 47-yard line. Oh, my goodness. We have to take a look at this. And you wonder why there's always guys in the open field doing a thing. It's because of the unselfishness. Watch this block by Wes Lyons, a deep leader right there, right oh. in the mustache of Leon Best. Oh, my goodness. I stole that one from a... An old coach back at the University of Houston says, get right in his mustache. That is hitting a man right in the mustache. Slayton gets the first down wow. in the East Carolina territory. But that's the other thing about West Virginia. Not only are they fast, but they are physical, and their receivers block downfield. We'll get it in real speed. We're talking about a guy 6'8", 220 pounds, so there's got to be some leverage here. Listen to this. Ooh. Wow. Lions a sophomore, and Bob Huggins might be looking at him. You mentioned 6'8". Physical. White with a fake. And throw a little bit high, but caught by Darryl, uh, Darrell Jala at the 39-yard line. They're getting eight, nine yards every play, West Virginia offensively. And they've already had 20 plays in plus territory in this first half. Well, Pat White is tough. He, you, know, you hear about his ability to run the football, but he will stand in the pocket and take a shot. And he did there to, to deliver the football to Darrell Jala. And right on time, 
But he had to take a lick, knowing he was going to take a lick, stood in there and delivered. But Pat White not in your top five among quarterbacks. As Slayton gets hit pretty hard, flag flies as Slayton gets the first down. Not yet, but he may be soon. Andre Woodson, of course, number one in your top five. You've been on that all year, and he proved you right last week against Louisville. A nice come from behind win against Louisville. And that was a that was a pretty good football game. Went right down to the wire. A little repositioning on my top five this week. Really? There's no flag on the play. He was grabbed by the shoulder. First on the play, first down. A little shakeup. So no penalty flag, but it is a first down for West Virginia. And here is your high five. So where's the shakeup? Booty? The shakeup goes to John Booty right here. John David Booty, and then you move my man Brian Brom down a little bit. And John David facing a pretty good Nebraska football team on the road. Uh, went in there in a hostile environment and played a the, uh, a pretty good football game. A couple of touchdown passes in that one, and then Andre Woodson just magical. Four touchdown passes against Louisville. White finds Schmidt and hard to bring down, but Eskridge got him at the 30 yard line after a six yard game. Well, that's when you know a guy's well coached, Pat White. And when you bootleg out and you show play action, you're going to see right here Schmidt just right underneath. The, uh, the defense of, of East Carolina. The first thing after a play fake is whatever color shows up in your face that's your own and open, give the football to him. Pat White right on time, and that will move the chains in your favor in a lot of instances if you just get it to your playmakers. White to Hogan inside the 20 yard line. Down to the 19. Now, we talked a lot about Steve Slayton, Noel Devine in this football game, and certainly they will be uh, a factor as we go along. But Pat White right now in rhythm throwing the football. West Virginia showing the country that Pat White, hey, there's here's something else you have to defend. I can shoot it out to my receivers, Darrell J, uh, Jala, as well as Brandon Hogan on that play. Let them make plays in the open field. They go back to the ground. And down to the 12-yard line is Steve Slayton as we bring Aaron Andrews back in. Well, Dave, Pat White's play here in the first half, very encouraging for head coach Rich Rodriguez. You know, last Thursday against Maryland, he said Pat is normally very sharp, but he wasn't as sharp in the first half. He felt his line missed a few blocks. He said Steve or uh, Pat missed a read or two, and Steve did as well. So that was something they really focused on in preparation for this game. Well, White last week threw 13 passes, completed only eight, and had 95 yards passing. He's already got 93 late in the second quarter here today. And got some cramps going on here. Quentin Cotton and they can't afford to have him go out the junior linebacker from High Point North Carolina Glen High School. It's not uh, not a overly hot day or humid day today. So uh, you know you wonder Andre wonder about the cramps with what's happened with East Carolina in this game. Skip Holtz's team gets off to a good start then an interception totally turns the game around. It's been an emotional start to the season for them. They had to play in Blacksburg first game yeah. since uh, uh, the the uh, the killings uh, in the spring at. Virginia Tech had to play in that emotional environment. Then they play their rivals, North Carolina, beat them for the first time in 30 years. And then they're ahead of Southern Miss and blow the game, end up losing in the last minute last week. Then you come into a hostile environment against a team that you know uh, just electricity on offense will bring a tremendous amount of pressure uh, defensively. And then you come in, not only do you turn over the football on your best drive of the game, you've got penalties that keep moving you behind the down and distance marker. You're making it hard on yourself. It's going to be tough enough to come into this type of atmosphere against some tremendous athletes, but then self-inflicted wounds, that puts you behind the eight ball as well. And West Virginia with a second down at the 12 yard line of East Carolina. White to the air. Green out inside the five. Touchdown, West Virginia, 23 to nothing. Another block by Big West Lions springs Raynaud for the score. Well, he got a tremendous block. 
from the freshman Jock Sanders in the slot. And this was a design play. Nice little swing pass, but he's going to get a nice block on the outside that's going to show up right there and just allows for Reynad to turn the corner, get his shoulder squared up, show the speed and the strength to get himself into the end zone. Two receivers there. Sanders, yep. a true freshman, and Lyons, a sophomore, again blocking downfield. Say that again. Freshman and sophomore means a lot of big days ahead still to come for this West Virginia program. And their offensive firepower on display here on this Saturday in Morgantown as they are hammering East Carolina. Darius Raynaud with a touchdown after Pat White has a perfect drive through the air. Six of six, 53 yards, and then the touchdown pass to Darius Raynaud. And I'll tell you, some unselfish play going on on the part of the offensive receivers for West Virginia, West Lions, and, uh, and, and Jock Sanders. Ball spinning around at the 20-yard line, eventually picked up by Jonathan Williams. He gets tattooed at the 32-yard line. That's where East Carolina will start this drive. Stan Barrett back in the studio with another score update. All right, Dave, thanks a lot. Jesse Farmer is going to join me at the half. We're going to talk about another Big East team getting a struggle today. Louisville having some problems with Syracuse. Also, we'll look ahead to Georgia and Alabama tonight over on ESPN. And Jesse's Palmer points. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting matchup coming up later. Arkansas, Kentucky. This game could make or break it for Arkansas. We'll talk about that later. All right, that's all coming up at the half, Dave. Okay, there's some great games in the SEC to today. Yeah. Some good action around college football. Here's true freshman uh, Dwayne Harris to the 36-yard line for four yards. Well, then you're almost in a situation now. If you're East Carolina, you need to get some points before halftime. you got to get some type of momentum established, something to kind of hang your hat on coming out for the second half of this football game. Prove to yourself that you can move the football, stay mistake-free, and then get some points at the end of a drive. You see the numbers for Pinkney at top there of our uh, score. Right around 500 throwing the ball, 40 passing yards, but only two yards on the ground for East Carolina. On second down, Pinckney with time. And his intended receiver, Dwayne Harris, got tripped up a little bit. Well, they're going pretty much exclusively to the passing game. And we, we talked to Todd Fitch, the offensive coordinator. So they had to use the passing game to make West Virginia defend the entire field. And they hadn't done that, but you don't want to become exclusively all pass because then you start to get that pressure around you. Once they make you one dimensional, they can start the blitzes and different looks on the defensive side. And all of a sudden, it is havoc all day for Patrick Pinkman. There's a third down and six. Their average distance on third down is eight yards, and Pinkney in trouble falls out. It'll go out of bounds, so it will remain East Carolina ball. It was knocked out by Morty Ivey, who had an interception in the first quarter. Our former high school quarterback, Morty Ivey, has really made some uh, some big inroads at the linebacker position, but I'm thinking that Patrick Pinckney's arms coming forward. He's moving around that clock once again, and right there, I think in his, his arms coming forward, they may take a look at this and give uh, East Carolina a break on some field position here. Because that's really all it would be. Uh, East Carolina the last to have possession, so when it goes out of bounds, it remains Pirate football. And hadn't stopped play yet, so Maybe they're seeing it a little bit differently than we are. Already five three and outs on six offensive possessions for East Carolina today, and the other possession ended in an interception. Here's Von Rivers on the punt return. Flag down. Rivers, though, is not. Up to the 40 and finally dropped at the 42-yard line. But again, a penalty marker down. I'll tell you what, Rivers threw a move on Dakota Marshall, the defensive back down covering on punts. And I'm telling you, he sprung his ankle. He sprang his ankle. Sprained his ankle coming down covering mm. on the punt because of just the move that, that Rivers threw on him. Holding number 24 on the return team. 10 yards from end of the run. First down. That's on Ellis Langster. Coming up on ABC 330. It's college football presented by Best Buy, part of Tailgate Week, presented by Kingsford. Can Penn State end an eight game losing streak to Michigan? Wolverines may be more confident after throttling Notre Dame last week. You know what I like about Joe Paterno, the ability to adapt. 
and realizes that the strength of his football team this year at wide receiver, they're opening it up. Morelli, the quarterback, throwing it around a little bit more. Not relying on the run like uh, those the old school Penn State football team. See the numbers from Mike Clark there against Notre Dame 187 yards and two touchdowns having a good season. Yeah but Michigan as a team is not you have to think as Jared Brown is in the game at quarterback for West Virginia have to think unless Michigan turns it around Hart has no shot at the Heisman regardless of what he does running the football. Pass to Slayton out of the backfield up to the 37 yard line. Did you agree with that, Drake? Does Hart have a chance at the Heisman? If he leads the country in rushing, but Michigan's 6 and 6, not going to win the Heisman, is he? Well, you know what? There, there have been teams that actually, I mean, or guys that have won it with, uh, with worse records than that. Uh, he's only lost two football games. I lost two the year I won it in 1989. We lost to Arkansas on the road and Texas A&M on the road. Yeah, but so, that was all you lost. Yeah, but that was it. So, you know, they get it turned around. That's all they may lose. That's all he may lose this season. Here's Brown, who's a talented backup quarterback, all the way to the East Carolina 37-yard line. Jared Brown, just a sophomore, 6'4", 220. Well, you're just going to see him right up the middle, right here. Nice little stutter step and pull it down, reads the blocks, and now you got all that area out there to just tuck it and run. Doesn't... He doesn't try to make a guy miss or anything, just straight up the field. And this is a guy that Rich Rodriguez loves. Jared Brown says he could start on a lot of football teams in college around the country. And you mentioned Bob Huggins was looking at him. Thought he was just a high school kid uh, playing some pickup basketball in Morgantown and found out that Brown already has a scholarship, a football <laughs> scholarship, as he gets to the 33 yard line for five yards and a timeout called by West Virginia. Well, Jared Brown made his first career start against Rutgers last year. It was a big game for West Virginia. Game tied at 33, and Jared Brown starting for Pat White, who was banged up, began triple overtime with a 22-yard touchdown pass. What a nice move. You see him here, just a nice lob shot to the corner of the end zone. And Mike Teal trying to hit Ray Rice. Incomplete West Virginia in triple overtime, knocks off Rutgers. Both those teams won 11 games last year. Louisville won the Big East with 12 victories. Special year last year for Rutgers. Kind of Greg Ciano's coming out party for that program. Now a lot of expectations, and they won't sneak up on anybody anymore. Everybody's got Rutgers on their radar. West Virginia uh, playing in the Big East in 2007 knows that it will not be an easy road to a Big East title. It's a pretty good day right there. 12 of 14, nice half of football for Pat White. And a rushing touchdown to boot. Here's Schmidt breaking free. And look at Schmidt whacking Van Eskridge right in the mouth of the 20-yard line. Boy, I talk about old school. That's just straight ahead right there. Schmidt, nice little underneath move. And in back, now I'm looking for the contact. I had talked to him once last season, covering him against East Carolina, and I said, I just love contact. If there's nobody around to hit, I'll just hit the ground. I just got to have some contact any way I can get it. Two timeouts left for West Virginia. And here they're going to lose yardage. Back at the 21-yard line, Steve Slayton brought down by Jeremy Chambliss. Boy. Owen Schmidt has broken, what, nine face masks <laughs> in his career? You know, legend has it around here that he took 430, excuse me, 425 pounds for eight reps and in the final rep over his head. So you talk about a strong individual, Owen Schmidt, old school. Owen Schmidt. Probably the X factor for West Virginia's offense. Had a great chance to talk uh, to Owen for a while yesterday. As you see, just some incredible numbers, not just with yeah, the and bench and squat. You talk about a guy that's 260 pounds and runs that right there, 4-5 with a vertical jump of 36. That, that, that's nice. That's a, that's a nice, that's nice uh, specs for a guy that uh, was a former walk-on. Tell you that hair cut looks like something out of Ace Ventura when nature calls. <laughs> I tell you what, nobody's going to give him any trouble, any problems with that haircut. Well, no, I'm no up here. Teasing him. It's easier for me up here. <laughs> well, That's right. Owen, when he was born, had a, a cleft palate. He needed surgeries to close his jaw and turned uh, into a great player after spending a season at Division Three West Virginia River Falls and walking on Brown. with the Mountaineers as Brown escapes and gets out of bounds at the 21-yard line. And still 26 seconds left here in the first half and West Virginia trying to 
add to a 24 point lead and doing it now with the backup quarterback Jared Brown. Yeah, six guys have run the ball for Rich Rodriguez's team and seven different players have got a reception today. And we talked to Rich yesterday and we, he said yeah Jared Brown's going to play it's not scripted we don't know when but at some point in the football game he's going to go in give Pat White a rest and here he is. Still one timeout remaining for West Virginia third down and 14 and Brown has a man over the middle and down at the 17 yard line is Jala and West Virginia will likely use its final timeout here and let the clock wind down. Well, just when you think you got it figured out with Steve Slayton, Pat White, they come with Noel Devine, they sprinkle a little Jock Sanders in, and then these receivers, Darrell Jala, is having a heck of a first half. We talked about West Lions, the unselfish play there, and then Brandon Hogan, he's gotten kind of in the mix here a little bit. So a lot of different players getting in the mix for uh, this West Virginia offense. So timeout, no timeouts remaining for West Virginia. Right now we're gonna check in with Mike Tarigo for a Monday Night Football preview. Vince Young is dynamic and excited and has brought the energy back to the Titans franchise. Drew Brees had a dream season in 2006, but now he and Reggie Bush try to find the Saints magic as they return home. Saints Titans, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN's Monday Night Football. Well, with the Saints, Andre 0 and 2 and looked horrible at Tampa Bay last week. I just can't seem to get themselves going offensively. And you talk about Drew Brees and Reggie Bush, Deuce McAllister, a lot of talent uh, on that offense trying to get themselves going at home this week, this Monday night. McAfee from 34 yards, his second made field goal, and it is a 27 to nothing lead for West Virginia at halftime. All Mountaineers in the first half here in Morgantown as they look to go to 4 and 0. Oh. 27 nothing they lead East Carolina at the break. Now Stan Barrett and Jesse Palmer with our halftime report, guys. All right, thanks a lot, Dave. Uh, before the game, Skip Holtz, the East Carolina coach, said that Pat White and Steve Slayton can make you look stupid. <laughs> I don't know about stupid, though. They're not looking very smart, although he was smart enough to realize that. Welcome into the Halftime Report. I'm Stan Verrett along with Jesse Palmer. And what you think about East Carolina and uh, West Virginia so far? Mountaineers are pretty impressive in the first half. Yeah, they are. I'll tell you what, I think a lot of the storyline coming into this football game was East Carolina defense ability to try to slow down this West Virginia rushing attack, something they've been able to do well in the past. But so far, it's been and West Virginia's defense playing unbelievable, really shutting down Patrick Pickney. They've been able to get pressure on him. They got an interception. They also forced a fumble. This is the best I've seen this West Virginia defense play so far this year. And then offensively, you know, it's unbelievable. Week in, week out, we talked about Steve Slayton, Pat White, Noel Devine, and all of a sudden, Darius Raynal is a guy who, in this first half, you've seen why in the locker room at West Virginia, they say he is the best athlete on this football team. It just amazes me how many playmakers this West Virginia team has on offense, and you see why it's a defensive coordinator's nightmare having to game plan for these guys week in and week out. And they've won 16 of 18 against East Carolina and solidly in control in this one so far. All right, let's talk about your Gators now. Conference play for them taking on Ole Miss today. The Gators hadn't won in the state of Mississippi since 1994. Of course, they don't play there every year, but Ole Miss mounted a drive. Seth Adams, his pass broken up in the end zone. They would get a field goal, though, to go up 3-0. First play of the second quarter, Tim Tebow. Gets it to Percy Harvin, and really that, that's all you have to do is, is get the ball to Percy Harvin. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Percy Harvin, another one of the sensational sophomores, along with Tim Tebow and Brandon James on this team right now. Give him the football, let him make plays for you. I'm well, midway through the second quarter now, and it's a game in Oxford. Well, still to come, Louisville's defense allowed 42 against Middle Tennessee. They gave up 40 to Kentucky. They're having problems with Syracuse now. And we'll check on the South Florida as well. You're watching Tailgate Week, presented by Kingsford. Back in Morgantown, where the tailgate party never ends, even for the youngsters sliding down the hill just outside Mountaineer Field at Milan Pushkar Stadium, 27-0 West Virginia. 
Andre, East Carolina did one thing very well. They punted terrifically. They punted the football in the well. first half, averaged 53 yards a boot. Otherwise, uh, West Virginia did everything. Hardware, software, both belong to the Mountaineers. Well, they got in space, and when you can get playmakers in space, they can certainly operate. Pat White did an excellent job of distributing the football, was efficient in the passing game. You see we're not here. The software that we talked about at the top right here, the softening up the defense, finding the, the, uh, the soft spots, and then Darius Renaud right here on the uh, a big play than Pat White, the keeper for the touchdown, and executing the run game as well as the pass game right here, getting the ball out in space to Renaud again and allowing him to work in the open field. Then some hardware of their own, West Virginia. Nice block on the part of West Lions right here, cleaning up one of the East Carolina defenders, and then the power of Owen Schmidt taking on Van Estridge of East Carolina in the open field. Fabulous first half for West Virginia offensively. Over 200 yards rushing for the Mountaineers. Slayton had 67 and a touchdown. And East Carolina, negative 11 rushing yards. Great throwing numbers for Pat White. We mentioned East Carolina has done as well defensively stopping West Virginia's rushing attack as anybody in the country the last couple of years, but not today. And then guess what? You got to kick off to him yeah. again here to start the second half. As Devine will take it out, bobbled it in the end zone, but here he comes. And the true freshman out past the 20 up to the 25-yard line. Our own Aaron Andrews had a chance to talk with Skip Holtz coming out of the locker room. What do you have to say, EA? His message to me was, hey, when you're down 27 to nothing heading into the second half, it's time to roll up your sleeves and compete. He said there are way too many mistakes on the offensive side of things, and simply they can't make a first down, and he blames a lot of that on the offensive line. He says they need to stand up and hold them a little better. And then on the defense side of things, they're not tackling. He said this isn't the kind of offense you want to go up against and not really tackle very well. He said that's something they're going to have to focus on a lot better in the second half, Dave. And that was the key to their success in the two previous years, even though they lost yeah. those games to West Virginia. And tackling in space. Here's White on the option, going to keep, gets a block from Slayton. And White picking a hole to the outside and gets up to the 28-yard line for about three yards. Boy, I'll tell you, we we uh, we talk about the the hits or the speed of this West Virginia offense, but a little physicalness to it as well. Look at Steve Slayton out there throwing a block for his quarterback, not afraid to stick his head in there. And West Lions, the receivers blocking well on the edges as well. That will make for some big plays in the offense. Slayton gained about 10 pounds in the offseason, adding to his upper body strength, and he looks bigger than he did last year. Listed at 190. I tell you, he's well put together. Now he, sitting there the other yesterday at lunch, looked like he had his shoulder pads on. White finds Hogan out to the 36-yard line for the first down, tackled by Jarek Hewitt. And Hogan actually started this football game for Darius <laughs> Reynard because of the shoulder injury for the uh, the senior senior wide receiver. But I tell you what, Hogan's filled in nicely, freshman. There's some incredible young talent. Oh, that it's amazing. A lot of fast talent. They like to use Hogan in the slot and work him from that uh, that position. You got Jack Sanders, a true freshman, Noel Devine, who we talked about in the first half. And here's Schmidt powering ahead of the 41 for about five yards back on the tackle. Why well, Schmidt's an interesting story. You know, former walk on and thanks Rich Rodriguez, the head coach, after every game for the opportunity and he says you know he's been on scholarship since after his sophomore year and those are the numbers for him in the Gator Bowl a cup last season 13 rushes went over 100 yards average eight almost eight and a half yards a carry and two touchdowns but thanks to the head coach for the opportunity the kid there he will we will watch him play on Sunday and especially after last week's game against Maryland a team that uh, really didn't even want him to walk on as white gets maybe a half a yard mark his hands on the tackle I got a feeling he's not a guy that forgets. <laughs> <laughs> he probably took it out on Maryland. Now we were talking with Rich Rodriguez about a lot of things, and, and you know, asked him, "Hey, did, did you were you looking for reasons to stay as opposed to leave for Alabama?" And he cited Owen Schmidt, Pat White, Steve Slayton as leaders as a reason to return, but also the commitment that the yeah. athletic departments made to a, a learning center, to redoing the locker room, and to winning a national title. And Provide all the resources for this football team and this program to win. Here's Slayton. Pass midfield and down the sideline. Trying to outrun us. 
Eskridge, who had the angle on him and takes him down inside of the 20. Right. Even at the end of the run, Steve Slayton looking for a little contact. But Van Eskridge finally uh, takes the right angle. Who's a lot of a lot of defensive backs in this ball game have taken bad angles and it's cost him. But you see Slayton right here come out the backside. Now it's just a foot race, and Van Eskridge uses the angle on the sideline to help him corral Steve Slayton, but not before a huge play by the junior running back. Slayton gets a break. Devine is in. Here's a pass out on the flat to another true freshman, Hogan, who we talked about earlier, and he's down to the 14-yard line. Well, you talk about tempo as well. The big play from Slayton. They're right at the line of scrimmage. Don't give you a chance to catch your breath, and they're right back at you, completing passes to the youngster, Brandon Hogan. They, you know, no, he can barely can substitute, and uh, you see East Carolina trying to shuffle players in and out here, but they don't give you time to breathe. White to the opposite side. Ray not going to score. Another touchdown for West Virginia. Another excellent block by another freshman wide receiver, Jock Sanders, who sets it up again for Darius Raynaud. Well, West Virginia's got South Florida coming up on Friday in Tampa at Raymond James Stadium, and they are warming up for that game by pasting East Carolina. It's 33 to nothing with the extra point coming. Oh, they have got talent everywhere. We're talking about Rich Rodriguez wanting to win a national title. First things first, you got to win the Big East and a tough one on Friday against South Florida coming up. It's 34 to nothing Mountaineers. Second touchdown for Reynad. 34 zip in Morgantown. This telecast is available on ESPN2 HD, presented by Pioneer Kuro HD TV. Back in Morgantown, West Virginia, the Monongahela River. Beautiful, beautiful scenery here. You know, we had breakfast uh, just outside uh, the Waterfront Hotel overlooking the Monongahela River today. Went, went for a nice run yesterday, and it was just so peaceful. And the temperature was just right. Speaking of nice runs, Darius Raynaud with a 64-yard run and then a touchdown catch two today and Pat White and uh, Steve Slayton also with touchdowns for the Mountaineers and they are rolling well, I mean, and that musket's been blown several times already and we still got a half to go virtually a flawless game for West Virginia low penalties no turnovers passing the football as efficient as you basically can Pat White 14 to 16 128 and now two touchdowns and with Jared Brown came in. He was two of two for 14 yards. So slinging it around a little bit. The Mountaineers. I mean, Joe Sullivan's stat of the day: six different Mountaineers have outrushed East Carolina, minus 11 rushing yards. Jonathan Williams on the return, pass for 30 and up to the 32. As we go back to the studio and check in with Stan Verrett. All right, guys. Florida and Ole Miss and Gators have won 10 in a row, dating back to last season. We showed you a Tim Tebow touchdown pass earlier. Of course, he presents this threat as well. In for the touchdown, and the Gators up 14-6 on Mississippi. Ole Miss hanging tight there for a little while. Now Florida's starting to get things going with Tim Tebow. Well, Andre, I know Chris and, and Sean touched on this last night uh, as they were talking about who is number one, and, and Chris Bielman saying you could take the top four, really, and just kind of mix and match them. What about West Virginia? Uh, can they make a case for being the best team in the country as Pinckney gets wrapped up after a game of one? Well, I think you, you, you can because of that right there. They've taken it personally that people have talked and criticized about their defensive unit, and then all of a sudden they are tackling in bunches. So if they can play defense like this the remainder of the season, we may watch West Virginia creep back closer. And you take USC, you take LSU, Oklahoma, and now West Virginia. Florida, you sprinkle them in there. It's going to be it'll be interesting down the down the uh, towards the uh, the finish line of the season. But you see it right there, all undefeated. A lot of a lot of uh, undefeated teams still in college football. Boy, did Oklahoma look good last night? Yes, they did. Chris Johnson to the 34-yard line, tackled by Mark Magro, and there's uh, some yellow down on the field. Penalty flag. Well, Jeff Castillo, the defensive coordinator for West Virginia, is really gotten the kids to buy into everybody rallying to the football and once you see a, the ball carrier Chris Johnson try to run the football and get in there is about six first or seven foul. jerseys around Thanks, it. Matt. Number 53 on the defense 15 yards first down and one of those six or seven got a little 
Little face mask there. That won't please him, Mr. Castile. Defensive coordinator in his seventh season with the Mountaineers. Omegro has engraved, so to speak, on uh, the side of his head by one of the, the friends of uh, the initials MOD, representing <laughs> Man of Destruction. And Omegro, a Morgantown native, but uh, displeasing his coach right there with that face mask personal foul penalty. A high intensity guy right there. Loves to play the game. First first down for East Carolina since the nine minute mark in the first quarter, and then a good run by Pinckney to the 43. <laughs> Got about six yards. Let's take a closer look at Mark Mager. There it is. M O D says his sister came up with that idea. Mark of <laughs> yeah. destruction. Yeah, right in there. M O D. Andre, we got to get one of those. Right in there. We got to get one of those for you. Uh, no thanks. Favorite player Brian Erlacher and Mark looks of like a little bit, doesn't he? Yeah, they say he just kind of goes home. The wolf's down. Mom's cooking. She'll cook a plate of spaghetti. Washes it down with a little water. Can't get enough in there. The mod yeah. squad here. There's his dad listening uh, to uh, Tony Caridi, uh, the great West Virginia play-by-play -play announcer, doing the game for many years here in Morgantown. Oh, what Taking a good down tackle. to the 40-yard line is Chris Johnson there for Johnson. gain of one. Got the first. All right, guys. Ball State and Nebraska beating for the first time ever. Ball State up 10-7 on the Huskers. Quentin Castillo in. makes his way into the end zone, and Nebraska back on top now, 14-10 at the half. Nebraska's still smarting after USC last week. Yeah, young freshman out of Laporte, Texas, Quentin Castillo there. Nice goal line, short yard, short yardage runner for Coach Callahan at Nebraska. We've got about five guys on our crew that are Ball State guys, and we're hoping that uh, Ball State can hang tight in Lincoln. First down at the 41. I think he fakes the pass. Lindsay, West Virginia not fooled. No gain of the play. Eric Wicks leads the way as we are at the 915 mark here in the third quarter. It's been all West Virginia. 34 to nothing as the Mountaineers are making their case for perhaps uh, being uh, top the polls with Andre Ware and Aaron Andrews. I'm Dave Pash. Slayton has a touchdown. Pat White has looked good, and Rich Rodriguez's team has racked up 396. But as you as you pointed out, Andre, the defense is what is the question mark. And so far today. They have shut down East Carolina. Not a great offense, but hey, against North Carolina, the quarterback, Patrick Pinkney, threw for over 400 yards. And he's just going to make those play, takes a dive at the 49-yard line to avoid getting his head chopped off that time. And that's what happens. It starts to happen when you can't run the football. And you've got to get in the ear of Chris Johnson and just tell him, stop trying to run east and west because he's not going to outrun a fast defensive unit of West Virginia. And then all of a sudden, when you can't run the football, you get guys crowded around the line of scrimmage, and they start bringing that pressure. You see it show up against Patrick Peakney on that play. Third down and 18 forever if you're East Carolina. West Virginia rushes four. Pinkney setting up the screen. Slipping a tackle is Johnson. And then bumped out of the 46 so they get somebody back. And you'd think they'd go for it here on fourth down, down by 34 points. Magro made the play defensively, but nope, East Carolina got a punt. If you're skip Pulse, if you get about half of it back, you got a pretty good opportunity to maybe set yourself up two down territory and go, go ahead and go for it on fourth down. But here, it's a little bit still too long. Go ahead and punt, try to pin West Virginia down inside the 10 yard line. I'm not sure that uh, that's a good remedy. Matt Dodge has been the MVP for East Carolina today. Averaging right around 50 yards a punt. Going to try to pin Rivers deep. Maybe fair caught at the 12 yard line. So West Virginia will start inside its 15 yard line, leading 34 to nothing on East Carolina. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by. Volkswagen. When you get into a Volkswagen, it gets into you. And American chemistry, essential to living. Learn more at AmericanChemistry.com. We are honoring tailgating all weekend long here on ESPN and ESPN2 and some of the best in the biz here in Morgantown. Right here in Morgantown. Great fans that eat, sleep, drink West Virginia football. A lot to cheer about. The last couple of years, 11 wins each of the last two seasons, looking to go 4-0 here and leading 34-0. 
on East Carolina. Running play, Slayton stood up at the 15-yard line by Fred Wilson. And we talked about the tailgating. Aaron Andrews earlier today was hanging out with some of these fine tailgaters. West Virginia, they take tailgating to a whole new level. These fans have kind of created a cooking area here, and each week they have a competition. Who has the best dish? Well, today it's chicken wings, and we've got the sauces over here. This is a hot, spicy, kind of garlic buttery sauce. Then we've got Tony's TNT sauce. That sounds kind of scary. And then Dusty's devil sauce. Too early for me. Andre, how do you roll? How do you like your wings, man? I'm a, uh, you know, Miles, kind of, you know, not too not spicy. You know, kind of a wings guy. I'm just, if somebody brought some wings up. Don't get that on that pink shirt. Yeah, I'm going to try not to, but I'm hoping they're not the fire ones that she was just talking about. I dumped some Tabasco on it at halftime when you left the room. You're going to get to it just about now. Good stuff. Want some water? No, no, I'm all right. All right, fine. That's where you're going after the game right there. Down They've got the some tent. wings safe for you down there. That's it. Third down and four. White hits Slayton out of the backfield, and here he goes again. Finally knocked out a play by Eskridge past midfield. That is the 17th play of 10 or more yards for West Virginia today. Boy, a nice job of getting him the ball in space. Can you see a nice move just kind of breaking down Leon Best. And then he turns the speed on. Boy, he is a dangerous football player. He's the NCAA active career touchdown leader with 47. As a, you see, we mentioned 17 plays with 10 yards or more. This one for East Carolina. Remember, Slayton's a junior. He's only played, though, for about a year and a half. He barely played at the beginning of 05. His right pass to number 10, Gary Scott. Rich Rodriguez kind of joked about that. He said, you know, that's how smart I was. I didn't play until game five. Yeah. I need to get him in sooner. But uh, I'll tell you what, he is more than made up for it. First consensus, West Virginia All-American to return to school. Fourth in the Heisman voting last year, and he told us yesterday, I'm going to wait until after the season, talk to friends and family members, talk with Coach Rodriguez, get a feel for where I might get drafted, and then make a decision on whether to come back to West Virginia for a senior year. Raynaud picks up the first down to the 32-yard line, eight more yards. You know, I was watching film on him, and he just didn't seem like he was running all that hard against Maryland last week. And, and then all of a sudden today, I don't know if he watched the film or somebody got to him. And then I turned on the one last year of East Carolina, and I saw a different Steve Slayton. And that's the Steve Slayton that has shown up in today's ball game, running with uh, power, running with speed, turning it on and off. He's been magical in this ball game. Great running backs in the Big East, huh? Ray Rice, obviously, we saw the Sean McCoy last week. And here's Monroe Devine, another future star. True freshman inside a 20 to the 18-yard line for 14 more yards. A nice job of getting the, the youngster involved. Just going to nice little under, underneath handoff to the youngster, Noel Devine. Noel Devine right here, and you see him. Nice seal blocks right there. And then cutting back up and inside, inside, looking for the contact. He's not that big at 170 pounds, but he's special as well. They go from fast to faster when he enters the game. Devine growing up in Fort Myers, Florida. Went to the same high school as Deion Sanders. Uh, after he verbal to uh, West Virginia, they were able to tutor him, help him get his grades, and he was able to pass his test scores and get into school as Pat White gets nothing on the play. Now, Devine had a very rough childhood. His parents uh, died of AIDS before he was age 11. His grandma's the legal guardian. There was a custody battle where you know, Deion Sanders was involved. And uh, Sanders, a mentor for Devine, and really wanted him to go to Florida State, but Divine, by his own choice, picked West Virginia. Yeah, Rex Rodriguez says the kid runs with a chip on his shoulder because a lot of people said he wouldn't make it with his size and his grades. And, you know, he's got a lot to prove, he's, and he runs that way. Came into this game averaging over 15 yards a carry. Well, just lit up Maryland last week with 136 yards on five carries, including a 76-yard run to the one-yard line. Here's White on the fake inside the 15. 
And White splattered at the eight yard line, but appears to have the first down. Nick Johnson on the tackle. With more on Noel Devine, here's Aaron Andrews. And just in talking to Rich Rodriguez, more about Noel Devine, he said the greatest part about having this young freshman who is like a sponge, he's soaking everything up. Look at who he's learning from. Pat White and Steve Slayton really taking the young freshman under their wing. They've been big brothers to him every step of the way, but they got on him last week. Devine had two big runs in that Thursday night game, and Slayton finished it up with two scores. They said, come on, guys. You got you a little faster than that. <laughs> First down and goal, Slayton back into the game. It's going to be Schmidt, though. He can't get away from his team at the four-yard line. Well, there have been some kids at West Virginia who found themselves in trouble. Two guys in particular, Chris Henry and Adam Pacman Jones, both yeah. suspended by the NFL. Henry for eight games, Pacman Jones for the whole season. But if you talk with Rich Rodriguez and others around the program, they say Noel Devine is not a problem child. Rough childhood, but uh, will not get into trouble at West Virginia or after West Virginia. Kind of has that reserve personality where he just kind of sits back, and real quiet type personality. But well, I tell you what, when he gets on the field, he's explosive. He lets it all hang out. White takes to Slayton, one on one with the defender. Look at Pat White! Pat White! And it's a touchdown for West Virginia. Well, this has been a problem all game long for Greg, Greg Hudson and the defense of East Carolina. They had such good safeties last year in Jamar Flournoy and Pierre Pierce, excuse me, Pierre Parker and Kyle Chase. They were such great open field tacklers and they have struggled with Van Estridge, Chris Maddox, and now Melvin Pat Patterson in the open field one-on-one -on -one with Pat White and just leaves him standing there. Extra point good and 41 to nothing is the score. Pat White with a rushing touchdown. Not your ordinary quarterback, huh? See you, Melvin Patterson. Two touchdowns rushing, two passing for White. Be singing that all night. Sound like some early morning tailgating to me. Oh man, there, what's he got? Some I think your car keys. Keys? Oh, he, not. Can you get your rental Let me car? Check my bag real quick. <laughs> oh boy. 41 to nothing. Pat White has accounted for four touchdowns today. Two rushing, two passing, now 12 on the season. And Johnson on the return slips past the 30 yard line. And the 32. Well, Pat White, six rushing, six passing touchdowns now in 2007. 58 total TDs for White. Well, he's a, a special player. Rick Trickett, who's now at Florida State, recruited him and said, you know, told Rich Rodriguez, if we get him, we'll compete for a national championship. And I'll tell you what, they are right on pace to do such. He's got that beat, beat speed. Start, stop, and bang. We're about right back to top speed. It's scary. And the direct snap to wide receiver Dwayne Harris. He gets out of 36 for about five yards. All right, Pat White, Steve Slayton, we talked in the first half that maybe they're getting split votes from the West Virginia fans about the Heisman. What about you? You have a Heisman vote. What I think, think so he vaults far? right to the top. I mean, you know, I like the guy. He's shown you or proved to, proven to you that he can throw the football effectively. He's had a very efficient game throwing the football, and then he's magical with his legs as he operates this West Virginia, West Virginia offense. I don't know about if they split votes anymore. They're two uh, totally different type players, but Pat White has been magical in this one. Here's Johnson, good run up to midfield. I think the, the key is going to be how these guys perform against some of these major league opponents in the Big East, starting Friday at South Florida, 8 Eastern on ESPN2. Yeah, I'll be tuned into that one because the Bulls are playing some pretty good football and uh, actually did the job last year here in Morgantown. Your uh, Syracuse Orange, they, uh, they're they playing some inspired football the last couple of weeks. They've still got Rutgers, Louisville, and Cincinnati on the schedule as well. So it's not going to be an easy deal to finish this season. 
Harris on the direct snap going to keep to the 46 yard line. Well, what's interesting, though, about this whole Heisman talk involving Pat White is he hasn't even cracked Andre's high five. You know, you just kind of got it right in, you know, Pat White right here and then squeeze him somewhere in there. Got to find a spot for him in there because I have, after a performance like this today, he's certainly deserving on the list. I don't know if we extend it to 5A and, and go from there, stretch it out a little bit, but uh, I'll tell you what, he'll be on that list next week. Two touchdowns rushing, almost a perfect day passing. I guess remember, an East Carolina defense, as Johnson gets the first down to the 37, that has played West Virginia as well as anybody in the country in the last couple of years, and Pat White has just shredded them today. Yes, East Carolina, it's been a rough day. In, in Texas, we used to have this, this thing where you decided a tie on penetrations. And it was actually one, you know, who got in the inside the 20-yard line more than the opponent. I'm not sure they cracked the 20-yard line, so they have no penetrations for this football game. They were on a good drive there earlier in the game when it was only 3 up in West Virginia, but then Pinkney threw an interception. And here they have Harris throw the ball, and it's incomplete. Intended downfield for you talk about my, my high five list. Guy with some stock is dropping a little bit. Brian Brom of Louisville struggling today. Lost last week to uh, a good Kentucky football team, so there may be some room there for Pat White once we reassess some things. 483 yards total offense for West Virginia coming into today. They averaged 500, which is 16th in the country, second in the nation in rushing coming into today. Penalty flag. That's I'd been say, the other part of East Carolina's yeah, issue today. That's been the problem. Every time they've gotten something positive started, a false start has uh, kind of backed them up behind the down and distance marker, and they've been fighting uphill all false day. Start. Offensive line on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Down remains second. It gets tough swimming upstream. The old arms get tired. Well, like we said in the first half, though, Skip Holtz has done a very good job at East Carolina. They had won three games in his two years in the two years prior to his arrival at East Carolina then last year went seven games takes them to their first bowl since 2001 this this is one of those games though if you're head coach Skip Holtz you go back you go back to the drawing board when you get yourself back home I, I got a feeling they're in for some rough rough practices this week as they uh, as they get ready to go down to my alma mater, University of Houston, and take on the Cougars next week. Yeah, East Carolina picked second behind Houston. No, excuse me, uh, East Carolina picked second behind Southern Miss in the Eastern Division of Conference USA. Houston picked first in Conference USA's Western Division. On second down and 15, Jonathan Williams on the carry. Four Marrow made the tackle at the 38-yard line for a gain of four. Third down coming up. Kind of more of an option type style, kind of trying to mimic what West Virginia has been doing offensively in this ball game. And kind of getting a little push up front. With Willie Barton, you see him there from Palmetto, Florida, came in from junior college for red shirt. Really, really came on the last 10 days of spring practice in that lineup today. Pinckney back at quarterback on third and 11 inside the West Virginia 40. And he's getting ready to see some pressure here, here, and here. And Pinckney going over the middle, knocked away, almost intercepted. Almost a pick for Antonio Lewis, but he could not hang on. So fourth down and 11. Don't forget, West Virginia at South Florida, 8 Eastern, Friday night on ESPN2, South Florida winning in Morgantown a year ago. And maybe the favorite, West Virginia, right now to win the Big East, but don't count out the Bulls, who are leading North Carolina as we speak over on ESPN. That's going to be a good football game next week, West Virginia, South Florida. You want to see a game of speed. South Florida, they can hold their own in terms of matching speed with West Virginia. Rivers fielding it inside the 15-yard line, breaking a couple tackles. Great return by Rivers. 
Big East first team special teamer in 2006 out to the 30 yard line as we bring Aaron Andrews in. We were talking about the big matchup with USF. Of course, the Mountaineers losing last year. And Owen Schmidt saying this year's motto is no regrets, no excuses. They felt they let a lot of things slip through their fingers. Of course, the loss to Louisville, the loss to USF. This year, the West Virginia team feels like it's up for grabs. It's up for the taking. They'd like to be in the discussion for a national championship, but like you mentioned, they know they have to take care of business in the Big East. Sounds like my head coach, Dub Ferris, in high school. No alibis, no regrets. Even for that haircut. Leave it all on the field. That's right. Jared Brown in for Pat White at quarterback, probably for the rest of the game. And Devine gets the carry going nowhere. Spun down in the backfield by Fred Wilson on what will likely be the final play of the third quarter. What West Virginia has done today is enough to make your hair stand up. 41-0 over East Carolina as we go to the fourth in Morgantown. Back in Morgantown, we're ready to start the fourth quarter. West Virginia on its way to a 4-0 start. Hammering East Carolina. Pat White with four touchdowns likely done for the day. Jared Brown in a quarterback. Sophomore from Florida is about 220 pounds. And he lowers the shoulder and goes up to the 35-yard line. Picked up five yards. Quentin Cotton on the tackle. It's kind of like bringing in the big bruising running back. You know, you, you kind of have that finesse back, and they have that in Pat White at quarterback. And then you come in with Jared Brown, who you mentioned 220, went in, went in at about 220 and seeing about 6'4. So he can pound you. When he turns it inside, there's a difference in when he's coming in the, in the between the tackles and he meets Fred Wilson. You know, Pat White's a little lighter, you kind of can nail him. I don't know if you want to take on Jared Brown. Hard to hit Pat White though. I mean, yeah, it is hard to get, get all of him to line him up. You just get a little bit. Brown taking off again. Slipping two tackles. And off to the races down the sideline. Finally pushed out inside the 40 and 35 by Leon Best. But Jared Brown showing what he can do at quarterback. Well, this is a designed quarterback draw where you see Pat Jared Brown, Brown right there. Nice little stutter step. Get, getting inside, Mike Dent, the center, throws him a nice block, another nice block on the outside by one of the receivers. And the big fella, he can rumble a little bit. He doesn't have that beep beep speed that Pat White has, but he can stretch out, stretch him out a little bit. Well, that's dominance right there. Rushing yards, passing yards, and look at the amount of plays. And your defense has to defend that. You're talking about tired and, and wearing the opponent down. That's what Rich Rodriguez and his offense has done this afternoon. And a short week for them. Friday night, they'll be in Tampa to take on South Florida. We'll have it here on ESPN2 at 8 Eastern time. And a short week for South Florida as well. That play North Carolina over on ESPN. Hogan with a catch. Fighting for yardage and won't get any. Tackled by Leon Best. I've been impressed with that youngster today. Brandon Hogan, freshman, six foot, 175 pounds. He's thrown some nice blocks as well, but they like to use him in the slot, get him the ball quick in the open field. Another freshman, Jock Sanders. They play him in the slot, and he's thrown some nice blocks. I tell you what, if I'm Darius Renard. I go over and thank the, the little fella because he played big today, blocking and standing in there, fighting and getting him uh, some open field to run it. Devine gets leveled by Nick Johnson at the 34-yard line, picked up one yard. He talked about Hogan, and we mentioned Devine told his story. Jock Sanders, the talent is so deep on West Virginia. When Rich Rodriguez took over for Don Nealon seven years ago, there had been a slip in talent. They only won a few games his first year. Mm -hmm. Then he started to stockpile and get guys like Pac-Man Jones, who granted isn't playing this year, but was a top-10 NFL draft pick. And they probably got three or four guys on this roster now that uh, have first round uh, draft uh, status at least right now and that's because of the way they play on offense the speed of this offense well, you get some fast players and some of them are a little undersized but this is uh, you, know, you get them wanting to come here and compete in this offense here's Devine picking his way towards the 27 guy like 
Oh, no. Well, Devine is not a big guy, but you get him out in space, and that's what this offense does is it creates space or for your playmakers to operate in space, and you get all that speed and quickness going from a lot of different angles. It becomes fun to play, and I was having that discussion with Pat White at lunch yesterday. I said, this, you know, once you guys, you learn to operate in the sense where you know where the soft spots are in terms of a pre-snap read, and that's when the game really, really gets fun too. West Virginia going for it on fourth down and two. Surprised by this, fourth down and two, going for it with a 41-point lead. Oh, no, these guys practice, they work hard. Brown's pass incomplete, intended for another freshman, Eddie Davis, in the corner of the end zone. You know, a East lot Carolina of, will take over. A lot over. of people will accuse you of running up the score, but when you have the backups in, you know, those guys practice hard. They need some reps in game type of situations as well. Back in Morgantown, the Mountaineers blowing out East Carolina here in the fourth quarter, 41 to nothing. Pat White with four touchdowns, and he's done for the day. And Patrick Pinckney apparently done for the day. Rob Cass into the game at quarterback, and Johnson with a good run up to the 40-yard line. Rob Cass, a sophomore from Longwood, Florida, who was supposed to start the season opener against yeah. Virginia Tech, but he was charged with the drunk driving just days before the season started and was suspended. Brett Clay started that game and then was pulled for Patrick Pinckney against uh, the Hokies. Yeah, now the job belongs to Patrick Pinckney. And, you know, you, you never know. After after a performance like this on offense, Rob Cass, he may get another shot. Six foot four, 247 pound sophomore. And then Pinckney certainly had his struggles today, but I think they struggled as an offensive unit as a whole. But who knows if he's able to come in and move the team spark some interest from uh, Coach Holtz for this week. Well, they're running the offense. They've got Chris Johnson out there starting tailback, so it's not like he's just coming in and throwing the ball. They're trying to run their offense and see what Cass can do, knowing that this game is over. Cass, you know, we'll see if he can, he can get something going here with an offense that has struggled all afternoon long. That's how you get your way you know, back in the favor of the coaches. Uh, in a game like this where nothing positive is gone, you come in, you step into the huddle, take command, lead your team down the field, and start to put something together to build on for next week. And who knows, he may find himself in the lineup against uh, the University of Houston. Play fake, Cass getting out of trouble, and then could not complete it to Norman Whitley out of the backfield. It's 41-0 because of Pat White today. Four touchdowns in the game, Greg. We just accounted, you see him here. Nice job of throwing the football out on the edges to his receiver, Darius Reynard. And then the running ability here. Nice little touchdown run as well. Keeping the East Carolina defense off balance and none better than to finish it off with a, a run to the pylon, a dive into the end zone. Pat White, 90% on the day, 18 to 20, 181 yards, two touchdown passes, nine runs for. 42 yards and another two touchdowns, four TDs for the West Virginia quarterback. Here's Cass on third down, and he's got Bryant. And appears to, well, he had the first down, but I'm going to mark him uh, very close to the 49-yard line. By the way, I'm glad you didn't get any sauce on no, that. No, you got to be able to do it. It's an art to eating wings, and you, you can't get it on your shirt. You know, there's an art? Yeah, yeah, away from the body. Okay. There's an art to playing quarterback, and you did that very well, winning a Heisman Trophy. You were a first-round draft pick in the NFL. Breakdown Pat White as a potential NFL quarterback. Well, what do you, you see? When you look at it, you have to compare him to someone like Vince Young, who's in the now. You know, we had that who's now on ESPN. Well, it's, it's Vince Young that I would compare him to. I think he's a better passer right now at this stage in his career than Vince Young. I think he's certainly as comparable a runner. He just doesn't have the size. Vince Young, 6'5", Pat White, 6'2", but they can do a lot of the same things, a lot of similarities between the two. Talked with him yesterday at lunch, and you know, he feels like uh, he'd love to have the opportunity to play for that. East Carolina going for it on fourth down and not getting it. Morty Ivey making the play defensively. He had an interception today that really started things going the wrong way for East Carolina. And now West Virginia will take over on downs. Well, this defense still fired up. Morty Ivey, you mentioned it, the interception earlier. He was a former high school quarterback that made the switch to defense. And, I'll tell you, he's playing well on that side of the football. Rich Rodriguez still coaching 
uh, his troops on uh, on defense still getting in the face of guys and had a long talk with Jared Brown after the fourth down uh, attempt to the end zone in the passing game. You think Pat White has to put on pounds? He's a buck 85. I mean, again, this is this is a guy who's a junior. Well, we'll talk about well, that when we come back. Yeah. Junior quarterback Pat White. The story of the day for West Virginia: four touchdowns. Rich Rodriguez, this team of 41 in the fourth. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Toyota. Moving forward. And ESPN Game Plan. See the most college football every Saturday. To order, call your pay-per-view provider. West Virginia making a case to be the number one team in the country, perhaps, with a 41 to nothing shutout of East Carolina. Pirates had not been shut out in 10 years. The last time was Syracuse back in 1997 when Donovan McNabb was playing quarterback. Here's Noel Devine, and going to get tackled behind the line of scrimmage back at the 45-yard line by Marshall. And Syracuse having a good day right now on the road at Louisville, but it's an East Carolina program that turned out some good players. Jeff Blake, David Garrard. Garrard now starting for Jacksonville. Right, 56 nothing. That's back when Syracuse could score points, although today the Orange looked like uh, the McNabb era. <laughs> Syracuse Orange with Marvin Harrison and Rob Conrad, Kevin Johnson. Devon getting to the outside and pushed out at the 48-yard line. I think that's Sanders on the carry. Excuse me, Jock Sanders, true freshman on the carry. Well, we talked about Blake and Gerard. Jeff Blake had as good an arm as anybody. Well, he could throw the deep ball, nice touch over the top, just allowing receivers to basically just run under. And then you get with Gerard, who had the rifle to knife it down the field. Now the starting quarterback of the Jacksonville Jaguars. You know what? Jeff Blake in 91 led East Carolina to an 11-1 record, final national ranking of number nine, and David Garrard led them to a 9-3 mark his sophomore season. Our two excellent signal callers for East Carolina. Wish they had one of those guys right now. Here's Brown stepping out of the pocket and taking off. Another good run. Blake blocking downfield again. First down of the 31 yard line. Talked about Blake and Gerard. Gerard, the school's leading passer all time yards. Second team All American, Jeff Blake in 1991. I'll tell you, I've, I've always liked David Gerard. He went to Jacksonville. I've always felt like he was the the guy to really play under the center for them. A lot of people like left, which I love Gerard. He gives them the ability to to make plays with his legs as well as a strong passing arm. Oh, Sanders upended at the 27-yard line, lost the ball, but they say he's down. Good hit by Marshall. But Byron Leftwich played his college ball in the state of West Virginia at Marshall. Good to see him reward Jock Sanders with a couple of carries in this ball game because he's thrown some nice blocks on the outside for Darius Raynaud, and that kind of goes flying under the radar a little bit, but I tell you, he stuck his nose in there, opened up the... Nice little running lane for his, his counterpart at receiver, Renat. Brown hands it off to Sanders this time. Close to the first down of the 23. Sanders can play wide receiver or running back. True freshman from St. Petersburg, Florida. And a lot of people kind of compare he and Noel Devine. If you don't see the numbers, you kind of think they're one of the same. They're built a lot of stature, both at 5'8". Jack Sanders, a little more weight, a few more rocks in his pocket at 185 pounds. So he can stand in there and take on those defensive backs in the open field. But hey, he'll run between the tackles tough as well. So much young talent on this West Virginia team. Ed Collington is coming to the game and running back, getting some reps here in the fourth quarter with West Virginia leading 41-0. First down of the 23, and Collington with his first touch of the day inside the 10-yard line, and Collington knocked out of bounds at the five. Boy, they just keep bringing we were talking about Pat White earlier, drafted by the Anaheim Angels in 04, and then was drafted again in the spring of 07. So big-time athlete. 
Collington right here, this nice big runner, big tough, a, a changeup from a Steve Slayton or yeah. a Noel Devine or Jock Sanders. He's a big guy with speed. And a first and goal, Collington going to stay in the game. And he'll get it. And he gets a couple of yards. That's a tired defensive unit that's on the field right now for East Carolina. They have played a lot of plays today. And has just been flat worn down by this West Virginia offense. You know, and the key for East Carolina, we mentioned in the first half, it's been an emotional year for them playing the first game at Virginia Tech since the shootings in the spring. Uh, the tough loss to rival Southern Miss. They got to find a way to get over this yeah. and move on because they can still win a conference title. Yep. I don't know if they have the talent to, but they, they still certainly have the possibility still, to do that. And still, the, the, the schedule's there for them to make a splash in Conference USA. Collington powering towards the goal line, and he's in. Another touchdown for West Virginia. Make that Connolly on the score. Touchdown by Connolly. I don't know about you, but my depth chart doesn't go that far. <laughs> I've since gone to the media guy. Check that. That was Collington on the touchdown. The ball ended up in the hands of Connolly in the end zone, but they say that uh, it was a touchdown first for Collington that the ball crossed the plane before it came out, and then it was recovered by Connolly in the end zone. That'll be a nice little celebration here in Morgantown after this one. But it'll be a short one in terms of getting ready for a good South Florida football team. West Virginia has been spectacular in the red zone all season long. Collington with a touchdown there. 22 of 23 in the red zone with 19 touchdowns for Rich Rodriguez's team. 48 nothing now on East Carolina. Can you say napkins? Those hot wings that Andre was devouring earlier, they're cooking up some more for you down uh, in Morgantown. And <laughs> He's got his fan going. Certified football expert. Aren't they all? That's right. Uh, some yeah, sweat on the back of Collins. It's not getting a chance to get out there and get some reps. Hey, everybody uh, getting, Saturday. In, getting in some action today. We've gone about four or five, uh, five deep on that depth chart at that position. Lindsey and Johnson back to return the kick. It'll be Lindsey at the goal line. Pass the 20, gets some blocks. And out to the 32-yard line. He's tackled by Eric Turner. Well, I know the West Virginia fans especially want to know, Andre, where where would you place them right now? They're ranked fifth. They've dropped since uh, the preseason when they were number three. Where are they in the top five? Well, it's tough to move them up because, I mean, Florida's playing some pretty good football ahead of them. Oklahoma's playing some good football, LSU and USC. So they're going to be right there. It's going to be a pack of games, somebody, because teams will start to play each other. I think a game to kind of keep a watch on is Oregon, USC, a little bit later in the season. That's going to be a good one. LSU and Florida will get it on in a head-to-head -head matchup. So we'll, uh, we'll see. It'll all kind of shake itself out. But West Virginia, I think once it starts to, they're going to be right there in the mix of things. Anybody outside the top ten that uh, you think could surprise people as we start to move along? I mean, there have been, uh, there's been a big shakeup with uh, uh, Georgia and Auburn, two teams that maybe going into the year some people thought could surprise. They've lost already. Well, no, not really. I mean, the, the top ten teams right now, you, you look at Louisville, they have certainly taken a step back from uh, from everybody in the pack, and, and it seems like they're they're having their struggles today against uh, against your uh, your alma mater, Syracuse, but uh, we'll, we'll see. It, it, it will all kind of shake itself out because you'll get the the head-to-head -head matchups with uh, a Florida and an LSU getting it on, Oregon, USC. And you see West Virginia's schedule here, South Florida, on the road next week, next Friday night, Syracuse, and it gets a little rough. Rutgers right there. That's a team that could make a run to vault themselves into uh, into the top ten. Yeah. Louisville still there, dangerous. That's a dangerous game. So a penalty on West Virginia. That's declined. Oh, that uh, game at Syracuse doesn't look like a gimme after today, even though Syracuse struggled at the beginning of the year. And obviously the big one this coming Friday at South Florida ESPN 2. Brian Kelly has Cincinnati playing about as well as any team in the country right now, so that's uh, that's no layup. Yep, inherited some good players there from Mark D'Antonio. Kelly 
Pretty good football coach, though. Big East, very good, very interesting. And if there is one team outside the top ten that could make a run, you, you may have hit it Rutgers because of Ray Rice and Mike mm -hmm. Teal, a quarterback, playing better. West Virginia has to play at Rutgers. Dwayne Harris in the West Virginia territory to the 48 yard line. Oh, you have got to get north and south, son, in a hurry. When you swing that little pass out there, it is designed to get up the field, get something positive as quickly as possible. You start dancing, then all of a sudden, everybody's going to show up in a hurry. So far, West Virginia put up 62 points week one against Western Michigan, 48 week two against Marshall, 31 on Maryland, and then 48 today on East Carolina. And I think really maybe the more impressive aspect of this game is the defense. Oh, yeah. I mean, everybody questioned this West Virginia defense, and they got themselves off the field. They applied pressure. And I'll tell you what, they got pressure on Cass again, had to take off, and did get the first down to the 40-yard line. They got a lot of backups right now on defense out there, and offense for that matter. And they're getting production from a lot of different players on, uh, on the defensive unit as well as offense. So, you know, Rich has gotten a very deep team all of a sudden, and then their defense has kind of grown up. It's, group of young players and you sprinkle a few seniors in there on the edges or in that secondary and uh, they're going to do some things. And we just saw Jeff Castile there. We talked with Coach Castile yeah. yesterday. He said, you know, last year, 109 pass defense. Said that the people have been hammering him about that even this season as Johnson takes it down to about the 32-yard line. But he said probably a combination of us, meaning West Virginia, just not being that great. But also a lot of teams had to throw the ball because they were yeah. so far behind. And, you know, total defense, pass defense, excuse me, is based on the amount of yards you get, not the points you allow. Yeah, and they came into this one ranked 68th, and when you are blowing teams out, you're averaging 41 points a game on offense, then, uh, or actually 47 points a game on offense, that teams have to throw to get themselves back into the, to the game, and that's where you get in that yardage late in ballgame. They've got some experience now in the secondary. The last year they had four new starters in the secondary. Good run by Norman Whitley to the 20-yard line. Whitley on the run. But uh, there's more experience. And Eric Richards. Wicks, a guy that Castile talked about, uh, said uh, this is a playmaker. Castile knows that Wicks is going to have to make some big plays for West Virginia the rest of the season. Forty-eight to nothing to score. And East Carolina trying to get some points, avoid its first shutout in ten years. Whitley breaks one tackle, gets to the outside, and inside the ten-yard line, tackled by Kent Richardson. Yeah, talking with uh, with Coach Todd Whitley, Fitch Harry. earlier in the week, he said Norman Whitley, as a redshirt freshman, is just has a uh, a knack for making big plays. He's been, the, he was a surprise of spring practice. And I got to believe after this drive and what he's done here, he may have pushed himself uh, further or closer towards some playing time the next week against the Houston Cougars. The pitch was out to South Carolina with Skip and Lou Holtz, quarterback coach at Iowa State the last three years, his first year at East Carolina. Here's Whitley. Down to the five-yard line. It'll bring up second down and goal. Well, he's got some nice vision, nice hesitation, and then some explosion to go along with it. You, you wait and let the big offensive lineman engage, and then all of a sudden he accelerates. He's, I tell you, he's got something, something nice. Only well, 101 rushing yards for East Carolina, and most of that coming in the fourth quarter. For a while, they had six different players. West Virginia did, but personally outrushed East Carolina as a team. Whitley again, nice move. And he gets stacked up at the two-yard line. James Ingram leading the charge defensively for West Virginia. James Ingram, all 6'2", 265 pounds of him out of Cleveland Heights, Ohio. Cleveland Heights High School. The third down and goal coming up. West Virginia hoping for the shutout. Well on their way to a 4-0 record with South Florida on deck Friday ESPN 2 at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. I think the story right now is does East Carolina avoid the shutout a 10-year run? Syracuse the last to do it, 56 nothing back in October of 97 against ECU. Chris Johnson into the game, he'll get it. Johnson looking for Pater, he's got it. Touchdown East Chris Carolina, Johnson. and there goes the shutout. East Carolina touchdown. Sigh of relief being <laughs> You don't want to have to travel all the way back home 
having been blown out 48 nothing. So anything positive that you can take back to uh, to East Carolina with you, the coaching staff looking to build on some things. I think a surprise. You know, running back uh, Norman Whitley gotten himself uh, some playing time for next week. Johnson sixth touchdown this year, third on the ground. And 48 to 7, West Virginia leading East Carolina. Under one minute to go here in Morgantown. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Toyota, moving forward. And ESPN Game Plan. See the most college football every Saturday. To order, call your pay per view provider. No shut up, it's still a great day for West Virginia fans. And regardless of age, they love their Mountaineers here. Oh, yeah. They, out of the womb, they start them early. Wearing gold and blue. Start them early, cheering for West Virginia. They're diehard fans. This entire town, entire city of Morgantown, in their, in their school colors on Saturday afternoon, especially for a home game. You know, there's been so much growth in the city, too. Uh, uh, the amount of uh, hotels in there is uh, we came over about three hours before the game. It took us about 40 minutes to oh, go yeah. a mile with all the traffic. And there's always been traffic. And over 9 million fans have come to the stadium to watch games. But uh, just uh, the number of people now, the population growing here in the city, and Obviously, the yeah. bell cow is the West Virginia football team. Yeah, it's my first trip to Morgantown, and I'll tell you, I don't mind, wouldn't mind coming back a few more times. It's been a fabulous experience. Kick into the ground and scooped up at the 32-yard line. And Trip Hale pushed out of bounds. Right around the 48-yard line. West Virginia will come back out for one more offensive series here with 52 seconds left. West Virginia's run for 372 yards, 52 rushing plays called by Rich Rodriguez today. That's a, you know, and on the flip side of that, that's a lot of defensive snaps for Skip Holtz and his defense. And don't forget on Friday the rematch of last year's upset. West Virginia heads down to Raymond James Stadium to Tampa, trying to avenge last year's disappointing loss to South Florida. Adam Bednarik is coming to the game at quarterback. He was the starter two years ago. Eventually replaced by Pat White. Bednarik playing some special teams and some receiver, but he's going to hand off here to Collington with a touchdown. The last time he touched it, and he gets to the 35-yard line. Let's go back to the studio. Check in with Stan Barrett. All right, Dave. Ball State and Nebraska. It's been a back and forth game. Nate Davis going to Dante Lowe. Play action. Up top for the touchdown in Ball State. Back on top after the great catch by Love. And Ball State leading 31-28. Syracuse has scored again. Andrew Robinson to Mike Williams for a touchdown. It's a 17-point lead now in the fourth quarter. All right, those fans in Lincoln, they can understand maybe losing the USC at home, but then Ball State goes in there. You need to be ready to retract that contract to get Bill Callahan a couple of weeks ago. Collington to the 29-yard line, that might be the final play. That would be a huge upset. And what's a bigger upset, though? Ball State in Nebraska or Syracuse and Louisville, the way Syracuse had played prior to today. Oh, definitely Ball State going into Lincoln, Nebraska with all that tradition. Are you kidding me? Yeah, you got to be able to rally your troops. I know it was a tough loss to USC. They, they, it was, they targeted it early in spring practice, talked about it. Uh, SC and them wanting to vault themselves back into uh, a national picture. And then lost one last week. Looks like the kids are still down from that one and suffering against Ball State. Well, the only upset today, if there is one, perhaps the margin of defeat, West Virginia. Played closely by Skip Holtz's Pirates the last couple of years, but a blowout today. 48 to 7 is the final West Virginia over East Carolina. Up next on ESPN2, NASCAR Countdown. Pat White, Steve Slayton, getting it done again for the Mountaineers who go to 4 and 0. Four touchdowns for Pat White today, two passing, two rushing. For more on this game, tune into ESPN News for a post-game extra for Andre Ware, Aaron Andrews, I'm Dave Cash. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. 48-7, the final West Virginia wins over East Carolina. Now back to the studio and Stan Barrett. So long for Morgantown. Stan?
All right, thanks a lot, Dave. So no shutout for West Virginia, but still pretty impressive performance. 48 to 7. I think Rich Rodriguez will take that. I think so. Yeah, I think so. A lot of excitement there. But nothing new, though. Nothing new. All right. Syracuse just shocking Louisville. It's it, it, hard to understand what's going on with Louisville's defense. Andrew Robinson to Mike Williams. 38 points for the Orange. They came in 0-3 in this game. They had lost 9 of their last 10. Louisville had won its last 20 at home. And it, it looks like they could go down today. Yeah, look, they're really reeling right now. It looks like following last week's loss to Kentucky again. But give Andrew Robinson a lot of credit right now. He is working through this West Coast offense beautifully, very accurate, getting the ball out in the hands of his playmakers. That's the best football I've seen him play since he's been there. All right, for more college football, you can switch over to ESPN. They'll keep you updated on everything going on. We'll be back at 5.30 with more college football, the Accurate Scoreboard Show. Right now, it's out to Dover, the Monster Mile for NASCAR.